All right, I believe that we should be live. Thank you for joining us today. Today I have Mr. God Logic in the house. We're going to be taking Ope all in from any Muslim who's brave enough to come up here and talk to us. You know, we're, we're nice people. We'll, we'll be very polite <laughs> and friendly, as long as the Muslim is, of course. If they start yelling at us, you know, we, we might right. respond in, in right. kind. Um, but in kind. as long as it's a nice, friendly chat from that end, you know, it'll be friendly chat from us as well. That's right. Uh, we'll get, we'll open the chat up in just a second here. And we'll start by getting to know Avery once uh, when we start with a word of prayer. And Avery said that he would be happy to lead us in that today. Awesome, awesome. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We uh, come before you today uh, with gratitude for our health being in our bodies. Um, Lord, we ask that you um, guide this stream, let your Holy Spirit dwell in this stream and uh, guide us, uh, lead us as we speak uh, accurately and truthfully, Lord God, that we are represent uh, representatives of you and of uh, of your walk, um, that we are uh, Christ-like in our, in our demeanor, that we're Christ-like in our decorum, um, and that our character invites those who do not know um, uh, and to in intrigue them to get to know you just a little bit more. Um, so uh, we ask that you move us out the way, move all pride out the way, move all esteem out the way that it's not us, it's all about you. It's the work that you do through us that accomplishes all things. And we pray this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so anyone who wants to come up and talk to us, you can do so at the very simple link of theology.chat. I'll go ahead and put that in the description as well. But while we're waiting for our first guest, let's get a chance to, to get to know Avery a little bit. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so um, um, I am a 28-year-old young man who uh, has a passion for outreach guys outreach um i kind of grew up in the church my dad was a preacher my grandpa was a preacher on my mom's side and so it you know everybody's kind of <laughs> in in this thing right um but i kind of uh when, when, once i learned what apologetics was i fell in love with it immediately because i loved sharing the gospel i loved talking about god i loved trying to answer questions when i was young and in high school and so um, once I learned in, in college what apologetics was, that that is called apologetics or whatever, then that's what I was like, yeah, I got to dive into this. Like, what is this world of Christianity that deals with this type of stuff, you know? And that's what made me fall in love with Christ uh, way more. That's what made me fall in love and get to know the triune God of the Bible a lot more by dealing with objections and seeing that there's answers seeing that there's clear concise answers in our bible in our history in our tradition and that we have nothing to fear and so my confidence in god skyrocketed and um i just begin to study more so yeah that's a little bit about me and this apologetics journey excellent excellent uh, yeah amen to that i remember when i kind of first accepted christianity for myself uh you know i did grow up in a christian family but you know, when I made that decision to accept Jesus as my savior for, for myself, I was quickly introduced to apologetics. Don't remember the exact way that I found out about it. And I was just shocked. I was shocked that there was so much evidence behind <laughs> our faith and, and, and excited, of course, as well. Yeah. Um, which is why I've been asking Muslims every time they comment on my channel for years now, what is your best evidence that Islam is true? And I'm hoping mm -hmm. that we get a chance to talk with a Muslim today about that same question. Why do you believe that Islam is true? Um, right. But in the meantime, why do you believe that Christianity is true? Yeah, well, uh, the biggest thing for me, uh, Thaddeus, has been prophecy. Um, the fact that Jesus fulfills so much prophecy um, that is it's unexplained unless it's explained through him. Uh, detail for detail, uh, event by event, the, you know, 700 years before he's born, a thousand years before he's born, even beyond that, we have all we have literally the gospel story 
of the Christ being crucified for the sins of mankind, literally in the Old Testament, 700 years before Jesus. So that for me, when I see prophecy, that's like an automatic sign that, yeah, God has, you know, spoken in reality and has dealt with us. And this is what he said is the truth. Um, so that prophecy is, is number one thing for me. And then the second thing behind it was the historical accuracy and the evidence backing up Jesus' crucifixion and his burial and his resurrection. That for me as well, the evidence behind that, the fact that I we have these this, these in, uh, incredibly intelligent people who have no explanation for why there's an empty tomb. Um, they they know they accept that there was a death, they accept that there was a burial, but they have no idea why the tomb is empty. You know what I'm saying? These are dudes who study this stuff, who's been researching this stuff for years, and so. The fact that the only uh, logical and reasonable answer is that exactly what the apostle said, that Jesus rose and we saw him and we're going to go ahead and die for it because it's true, um, is convincing enough for me. So, yeah, prophecy and the resurrection of our Lord is, is hands down for me the biggest things. So we have Mr. Rambo Seven in the chat. He's been invited to come up and speak many times. I'm actually shocked that he's still here. Usually... As soon as the broadcast goes live, he he leaves. But today, st sticking around for a little bit at least. <laughs> and uh, he, he says that in, in response to your comment, if there's so much evidence for, that you said there's so much for evidence for Christianity, he says logically there can be none since Judaism has an issue with Christianity. What do you think about that right. argument? Well, I think it's uh, one based on, on ignorance because uh, the Jews aren't the monolith. Um, if you actually look into what uh, the Jews think about the Messiah and their interpretations in the Targums and stuff, you'll see that a lot of the rabbis agree with us on these messianic uh, prophecies. They interpret it the same way we did, except the only thing is that they're, they don't come to the conclusion that Jesus is that Messiah. That's it. So um, it's not all of Judaism that has a problem with the Christian understanding of the Messiah and who the Messiah is. They're just in uh, a lot of them are just in rebellion against God and they're in their state. The most Jewish thing you can do is believe in, in the Messiah. And that's Jesus. If he's a Muslim and he's holding this argument, it's it's absolutely uh, uh, ridiculous to me, because as a Muslim, you believe like we do that Jesus is the Messiah. No ifs, ands or buts. So if you're saying that it's so if that's so evident, yet the Jews have a problem with that, then you should throw Jesus as the Messiah out the window. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Jews have a problem with Islam. So, I mean, if he's going to be logically <laughs> consistent here, I guess he should leave Islam. Um, yes. I mean, I guess the argument is that, you know, if Christianity is supposed to be the completion of Judaism, why hasn't every Jew accepted it? But pretty silly argument after all. Uh, we do have the ability to accept or reject the message. The fact that not everyone accepts it, it makes no difference whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. It's the, right. basically the same free decision to make. Uh, last time I checked, uh, Thaddeus, wasn't it, weren't, wasn't it Jews that first started the move, the Jesus movement? Wasn't it started by Jews? It was. Hmm. Oh, I thought so. Incredible. So we're, we're coming into a Jewish belief then, a Jewish movement insane so yeah he should come up he should come up and uh and try to engage in the conversation come up live let's have the talk i saw him uh, make a comment earlier saying that the messiah was a muslim i'd love to have that conversation yeah, yeah i would love definitely. to have that conversation <laughs> yeah, starting with the question of uh, you know what does messiah even mean according to you know, islam because mm -hmm. i would really like to get an answer to that I, I think that, you know, when you look at, say, Ibn Kathir or Al Tabri, they really wanted to get an answer too, but they couldn't quite figure it out for some reason. <laughs> couldn't couldn't put their fingers on it, that is. <laughs> one says uh, he's a Messiah because, you know, he touched people and they was healed. Another one says he's a Messiah because he traveled a lot. Uh, you know, all, all these different kinds of things because he's righteous or whatever. None of them could tell us exactly what Messiah is. So, you know, maybe maybe our, our friend, Mr. Rambo, can, can help us, Thaddeus. I don't know. We're, we're a little lost. Yeah, I, I hope so. 
Uh, so it looks like Nadir is in the chat. He said that you should debate me on slavery and Islam. So Avery, you interested in debating Nadir? I, I promised him that I would get someone to debate him on this subject, actually. I know I know it's Nadir. I know I know that you know we're all very scared of him. We're all cowering yeah. in fear of Nadir. Uh, but is that something you'd be interested in? Uh yeah, maybe. Why not? Why not? Why not? Slave or slavery in is uh, in Islam. Why not? Yeah. So he he uh, came on this channel. Uh, him and another fellow both independently uh, agreed that they wanted to debate slavery in the Bible. Uh, I agreed to host it. They came on, and then Nadir wanted a follow up on slavery in Islam. He he claims that every Christian is afraid of this subject, which mm -hmm. doesn't even make logical sense to me. Because how would talking about Islam be threatening, even if even if for the sake of argument, Islam had a perfect teaching on slavery that I wouldn't find that intimidating. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't make Islam true. It just make it have be right on something. But then again, uh, when we look at the sources, it, I think it's Nadir yeah. who should be threatened and not wanting to discuss this subject. Just my, <laughs> no, just my thoughts. But. I, I'm actually a little, I mean, I'm not, it's Nadir. I'm not surprised at the, you know, uh, he's, he's good at trying to sell a fight, I guess, you know, trying to promote the fight, you know, all Christians are scared of this, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, but Nadir, you should come up and talk about the yep, Messiah with us. Now you can come up and talk with us. Now he said that Islam corrects the scientific errors of the Bible. I had a four or five hour stream with Nadir on that subject. He, at one point, he said, uh, I made a comment that a lot of people were watching. He's like, yeah, they've all come to see my destruction because he was doing so poorly <laughs> trying to defend his position. But hey, he's back uh, giving it again. So he's welcome to so, come up and talk to us. So today. Nadir is your biggest fan, huh? Yeah, yeah your biggest <laughs> fan is Nadir. <laughs> well, you know, I, I got a few, I got a few fans. Uh, right now, Nadir is definitely <laughs> interested in me because... I mean, let's be honest, most people uh, have grown bored with him and, and don't want to talk yeah. to him anymore, and, and yeah, I'm willing yeah. to do so, so mm -hmm. he's interested yeah. in that. Got a couple you, you uh, super chats here. Uh, this was earlier before we started, but I forgot to read it at the start from Wooter. Congratulations, Thaddeus, on the 100,000 watch hours up to the next 100,000, and thank you for that amazing donation there wooter a hundred pound donation or a hundred euro donation that's pretty insane that's awesome, uh, that's awesome. chris Kloss, you. just a moment again may god bless both of you brothers let's see if a muslim will challenge you both today should be very interesting uh, you know <laughs> if if no muslim wants to talk to us uh, that means something too because I know there'll be Muslims in the comment section later on. I, I know there are Muslims watching right now. Eh, they don't want to talk to us. Uh, I mean, heck, Nadir loves publicity, and he, he doesn't he hasn't right. even come up to talk to us. <laughs> I, guess, I guess, you know, to, to pull in Nadir here, everyone's afraid of us. They, they cannot <laughs> handle the truth. <laughs> everyone's afraid. Their, their hearts are diseased, Thaddeus. Their hearts are diseased. Uh, they're not up on the hawk, so they're afraid. They are afraid. And from N.A. Odessa, Nadir never learns his lesson. So thank you all for those donations. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Let's see. But yeah, listen, guys, if, you know, as you know, um, Thaddeus doesn't bite. I don't bite. Come on up and have a conversation with us. We are inviting you guys to give us the good dawah. Thaddeus, do you want some good dawah today? I feel like Indeed. you want some good dawah. You know, I, I would yeah. love to discuss arguments. You know, that's what I like to do here. I like to, you know, get into the details and really discuss things. There are people who like to just try to shout one another down, but that's the exact opposite uh, of what I'm interested in doing. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see this clip? where Hamza, you know, the guy who has the open call-in show for Christians to call in, was encouraging Muslims not to go on Christian streams. What? No, I didn't. Are you serious? Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, uh, 
James is tired posted a clip a, a couple days ago where he's like, if you associate with the enemy, you will be labeled. Kind of implying oh. that, that, that you would be blackballed by the community for daring to talk with Christians. Wow. Look at that. What well, wonder what that's about, Thaddeus. Why, why would he do that? I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe he's not just uh, posturing a bit here when he when he has this <laughs> open call-in show and anyone can call in and then he can just choose not to put on people who he thinks will have good arguments to make. Mm -hmm. painting a picture that you know christianity has no answers but if they go and actually listen to the christians then they might see that's not the case exactly that's incredible to me uh, somebody as as fearless uh as 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 hamza you know the lion uh you know in the den you know what i'm saying how how, how could he put up a call for the muslims who have all the answers who have nothing to fear when it comes to Christians and their and their objections and stuff like that. Uh, I'm confused. How come? Why would he tell them not to join our streams and have a conversation? That is so interesting to me. I'm I'm intrigued by that. Allahu alam. Allahu alam. So, uh, Ask Truth is, is saying that uh, he might call in as Mr. Muslim if if we need him. To. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you seen his Mr. Muslim character? No. <laughs> No, I feel like I'm missing out a good deal. <laughs> yeah, definitely check that out later. He has some videos where, uh, you know, it's like Mr. Muslim uh, explains <laughs> Aisha or whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. That is so funny. Well, guys, oh, we, have, look, we have... Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, 100 says he got banned from Hamza's stream the other week. That guy is so sensitive. Did he really? And I... I hear this over and over again that whenever a, a Christian calls in and they have enough knowledge to question Islam, suddenly it's like, oh, we're not going to talk to people who, who are insulting our prophet. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's an insult, man. Hey, 100. First of all, you know not to quote the Quran. You know not to quote hadiths. You know that that's Islamophobic literature. So why would you go into a Muslim stream in the comment section posting uh questions about the quran or the hadith that's islam islamophobic literature you should know better man it's good that he blocked you it's good that he blocked you you deserved it yeah Stuck exactly uh in uh islam critiques new video which hasn't been released yet but he, he put it on patreon he said that uh, for a long time uh, uh, well-respected scholar of Islam kept telling him that Muslims don't actually care what the Quran says. They only care what the tradition says about the Quran. He said, I never believed him, but I, I'm believing him now because of experience talking to Muslims. And they don't seem to really know what their sources say. So that you read their sources and they say, how dare you be an Islamophobe? How dare you insult us with such, such fake material? Well, I mean, we kind of agree it's fake, but if it's yeah, fake, right. then your religion is is also fake. Just saying. yes, yes, yes. That's the dichotomy. I like I said, I I, I told you before, <clears throat> before we started this stream, we was having a conversation with Muslims, and we quoted the Quran and we quoted hadiths, and the lit literally the Muslim told us, "I don't care about this stuff. I do not care." Well, we asked him. Can Allah enter creation? If he can, or if he cannot, then who was it that was in the fire that called out to Moses? Who was that? Who was, where was Allah when it says that he appeared to the mountain? Where did he appear? Was that on earth? I want to know, you know, and he says, I don't care about this. I don't care about these things. This is what they're saying, man. They have no answers when it comes to the Quran, the Hadith. They don't care about what it says, man. They don't care what the Quran says or the Hadith. It's tough, tough world. So we do have a question from Danny. Have you ever addressed the claim that Muhammad split the moon? Is there any evidence for or against it? So I'll let you answer first and then maybe I'll add a couple of thoughts. 
Yeah, so first of all, um, the Quran is very clear in multiple places that Muhammad did not perform any miracles whatsoever. That's number one. So we're going to be consistent with the Quran. Lord, let's go with this argument. So you have the Quran says that Muhammad never performed any miracles. For example, chapter 17, verse 59, Allah literally says that we refrain from sending miracles, from sending signs, because the people of the past disbelieve. So we're not going to send signs now. So, and he's just a warner. Now, if the Muslims want to go ahead and contradict what Allah said and say, Look, well, no, he split the moon. That was a miracle that he performed. Then you have a contradiction in the Quran. Or you could be consistent with what the Quran says because the Quran doesn't even say that Muhammad split the moon. It says, show us a sign. Show us a sign of the end time. So uh, the sign of the end time was supposed to be that the moon is split. That's supposed to be a sign of the end of days, of the day of judgment. Right, a future, a future, and not that he looked up at the moon, snapped his fingers, and it split. No, that was not an act performed by Muhammad. It was supposed to be a, a semblance of po pointing to the day of judgment. And lo, lo and behold, we're still here. The day of judgment has not came yet. If the moon did split, so I guess that was a false prophecy. Uh, if they're saying that that actually happened, go ahead. That is, yeah, a couple ways it could go with that, but uh, directly into the question here, uh, there was a viral picture being passed around in Islamic circles a, a few years ago, claiming to show the split it, that NASA had discovered that the moon had been split. So they actually had to put out an official statement saying there is no evidence that the moon has ever been in two pieces <laughs> or been split. <laughs> so to answer your question, there's no real evidence. Uh, you know, Muslims will pass around a fake picture or they'll claim that someone in china observed the moon mm -hmm. being split at the same time um mm -hmm. it, you know if you actually go to those sources it's the same kind of interpretive game that they they play with the quran that they take in vague words and totally change their meaning so no i mean there's no real evidence uh, uh, I had a Muslim tell me that the reason no one else observed this, because keep in mind, if this really happened, there'd be people all around the world observing it. It would probably be something that would be written down, at least in some places, I would think. They said, right. oh, everyone was sleeping at the time. That, that's why <laughs> That's why there's no evidence. Everyone but I do around agree. the world I, was sleeping, that is? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the, the, the sun had gone below Allah's throne and, and it hadn't pro finished prostrating. So there was no sun anywhere in the world at that time. Mm. Mashallah, the truth, the haq is revealed in Al-Islam. I'm almost ready to say my shahada after that one, Thaddeus. <laughs> I, I do agree with you, though, that the Quran seems to be talking about the end times. Uh, it doesn't seem to be saying Muhammad's doing anything. Uh, but the, mm -hmm. in their desperation to try to make Muhammad as good as Jesus, Muslims invented all kinds of miracles. That's the only one they could point to in the Quran. But if you look at the Sira literature, it's like it's filled with all these miracles suddenly that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Quran is saying over and over again, I, I think it probably says at least 30 times that Muhammad could work no miracles. And then yeah. <laughs> you read the Sirah and he water's coming out of his fingers. He's feeding 5,000. He, he's raising the dead, <laughs> all kinds of things going on. Most of oh, which is borrowed directly from the gospel. Right, right. It's, 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 it is amazing that uh, how the story of Muhammad does develop. Uh, when you go to the Sunnah of the Prophet, when you go to the Hadith, man, uh, he it becomes some type of, uh, you know, uh, his his character is is bolstered. You know, this guy, this guy must have really been a prophet doing all these type of works, you know. But then in the same type of Hadith that he is, you'll have him being bewitched for like six months to a year, uh, you know, and, and and thinking that he's done things with his wives that you know he actually had not done. I don't, how am I supposed to take this as a out from the outside looking in? You have these miraculous things that he's supposedly done, being a prophet, being protected by Allah from the powers of the devil. And yet I see this man getting bewitched and being bewitched for about six months. I, how, how am I as an outsider looking in supposed to, to judge this, man? 
That's the real question to you. Help me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, from an outsider perspective, there does seem to actually be some truth in the Islamic sources. I mean, a lot of things are made up, but the the origin stories of Islam, you know, it seems to make a lot of sense to me that, that here you have this person who is desperately trying to connect with the spiritual world in a cave and along comes what he deems to be a demon and, and squeezes him and he thinks he's possessed. I think he might have been right. Uh, if you look at his development over time, the the from from the biographies that Muslims themselves wrote, he seems to have been a lot better person before he became a prophet, and he seems to have gotten steadily <laughs> worse as, as he's getting revelation. Right. I don't know. It seems right. his revelation might have been coming from a demon. That that is a good point. That his character before he became a prophet seemed to be a little better than when he actually became a prophet and then you get to see all these teachings of um you know that he can have whatever woman he wants um and this is a privilege only to him and no one else uh where uh he's getting dreams from allah to marry and sleep with a, a little a nine-year-old child um or where Allah is giving them permission to sleep with married captive women whose husbands are still alive in front of their faces and things of this nature. This stuff is interesting. This stuff, and this is stuff, all that's happening after he receives his prophethood and after he believes that he's actually demon possessed. Like, why would we not believe him when he tells us his story of how he was in the cave, what happened to him? Uh, and how he reacted. Why would we not believe that actual reaction? I believe it. I do. If if he was a real person and he really did have an experience, I don't doubt that that, that was his experience because the teachings follow suit. It matches. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It matches. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, everybody so come on up. Oh, yeah. Any question? The Christians are welcome to come up and talk to us as well if they would like. Uh, so Chris Kloss said he has a question for you. What are the three most effective arguments against Islam? He said three. <laughs> Trying to get us. Yeah, up. you know, we'll, we'll we'll limit it to three so that, that you're not just talking about this for the rest of the stream, because I'm sure you probably could talk about arguments against Islam. Oh, no, yeah. The the no, that, that's good. So effective arguments. So the... Um, Number one for me is the uh, the child re uh, sex relations in taught in the Quran and by the tafsirs and the rulings, um, because that is so clear, um, it goes against their their conscience. And um, you know, usually they'll say, "Well, you know, as long as she reaches puberty, then that's fine. That's fine. But before puberty, then that's not okay." And once they say that, well, then you begin to show them that um, it's actually in their Quran and their the understanding of the tradition of Islam that they can have sexual relations and marriages with kids before they reach puberty. So that that's that's number one for me. That like seems to be pretty effective, like appealing to you know the morality of the person, you know, because they're already brainwashed. Yeah, exactly. Mo mo morality, Chris Claus. Um, another one that I like, another angle that I like to go uh, is the contradictions, the contradictions in the Quran. Um, one of my favorites is whether or not the Quran is perfectly clear and detailed or if only Allah knows the meanings while other you know verses are unclear. So contradictions is a good one. Do, you know, like, and by the way, these all depend on who you're talking to. Like some people, some people are different like a person when it comes to morality they'll say uh, whatever the quran and the hadith say that's that's what i'll go with well, you know forget my morality my morality matches up with whatever is allowed in the quran and the hadith now, they'll say that so then maybe you can appeal to that person's logic okay then maybe you know islam doesn't it just actually doesn't make sense it doesn't fit logically there's contradictions in it you cannot reason your way out of this type of thing so That'll be two for me. Uh, what's third? Third is uh, uh, Allah, Allah's uh, nature. They can't explain that. 
And they talk about how the Trinity is confusing. I'm like, okay, explain to me Allah's hand. Explain that to a child, Allah's hand. Please, if it's not, if it's so simple, explain that to me. So I love going into Tawheed and attacking that, um, the uniqueness of Allah, quote unquote. Whether he's one God or is the Quran is another God alongside him. This is, I love Tawheed. I love talking about Tawheed. So, yeah, I, I would have to agree that on, on balance, the moral argument tends to be the most powerful just because that's the way most people ultimately make decisions, that, that they make decisions based on feelings and emotion. Strictly speaking, it might not be as powerful, logically speaking, uh, the, the morality argument, but I think it's probably the main one that causes people to ultimately leave Islam. And you see this from yeah. atheists now that they're they no longer seem to be arguing that Christianity is false. I mean, they may say it now, may argue it now and then, but the primary argument for most atheists is that Christianity is immoral. That Christianity caused all of the world's wars and problems and whatnot. Totally, totally counterfactual, but you can see how powerful that argument is. Yeah. I do like the contradictions. Uh, whenever a I always love when a Muslim will tell me that there's no contradictions in the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> and I always just say, all right, let's go to verse 482, which is the, the statement that there's no contradictions in the Quran. And it says, mm -hmm. if this wasn't from Allah, it would contain much contradictions, which itself is a error because it, it's it's backwards. Yeah, the author of the Quran flipped the two things. It should be if there are errors, then it's not from Allah. That would work. But that wouldn't be right. a test for its truth. That would just that could only be used against it, right? So because he's like, I need something to prove this is real. He's like, if if it wasn't from God, it would have many contradictions, which then yeah. means anything that doesn't have contradictions is from God, according to that logic. Yeah, exactly. So it, the, it, Allah shoots himself in the foot with that. He literally gives Indeed. us a, group, a blueprint on how to destroy Islam, destroy the Quran, prove it's false. You know? I had a, a Muslim kind enough to come up and talk with me on Sunday to give his reasons for believing in Islam. And uh, at the end of the stream, I asked him about that verse, about 482. And he, said, and he, he literally said this. He said, you have to judge by what it intends to say, not what it actually says. <laughs> and you know, I, I'm very, I'm very polite, but I could not help but laughing when he said that because I'm like, you just, you just said that you know better than your God. You, you know how to, you know what it intends to say better than he yeah. does. You could write a better Quran. You know what? He he would have been better off by saying this is, you know, one of the verses that only Allah knows the meaning of. Only Allah knows its meaning. I, I don't know. He would have been better off with that. Do we have somebody? There's some. Yep. Someone has come up. Uh, they didn't supply a name, so I don't know what to call them. Sorry, hello, Tadia, this Colin. is this is this is a boss. Sorry, I don't know how to put my name in this in the stream. A boss. How, how are you, brothers? You OK? I'm pretty good. How are you, man? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, very good, very good. Sure, sure. Yeah, I was just, I was just listening, and I was saying, when to enter, just be the right time to enter. You know, you you want to say something, so I can answer something, <laughs> because topic <laughs> is quite uh, 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 vast. So you guys say something yeah. very funny, and I think I should definitely come and uh, try to correct you. My brother said something earlier uh, about. Uh, the woman marriage, I'd like to talk about Surah Talaq, Alhamdulillah. But the, you think is you just say 482 and you don't understand what it says. It's just so clear. The, the verse is a falsification test. It's so clear. Now you you interpret that it means that if anything comes from, anything has no error, that means it's from God. That's what you understood. I think that's what David Wood understood. I think you repeated to him, if I'm not mistaken. That's not well, Allah saying that. Well, okay. No, no. I, okay, that. first of all, I'm not repeating David Wood. Uh, so yeah. let, let's not go there. Uh, okay. So the, the statement of the Quran is, had they not pondered, have they not pondered on this? If it was yeah. not from Allah, 
It would contain much air. Right. Yeah. And what is Am talking I about? Quoting the verse correctly. Talking about Am the Quran. I quoting the verse correctly. Yeah. Yes, you are. They're talking about the Quran. Have they not pondered upon it? It is, which is Quran. Right. Had it not been from God, right. there will be many contradictions. It's like saying this, mm -hmm. for example, this is a watch. If this is not Rolex, it would have, it would have not been waterproof. If you throw in the water, it would not be uh, waterproof. I don't know if I'm getting it right. So what the point here is Rolex is the watch. When you put in the water, it will not harm the, the watch. It will be fine. That doesn't mean any watch you put in the water is Rolex. And if it doesn't get spoiled, it's Rolex. You understand what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't mean that okay, the that, that's actually a perfect statement. So let me yes. let me say something that's logically equivalent to what you just said. You said yeah. if this watch was not a Rolex, it wouldn't be waterproof. A that's logically right. equivalent statement to that is if this watch is not waterproof, it's not a Rolex. No, that means the Rolex is a, is a watch. If it's a Rolex, it will definitely be waterproof. That doesn't mean any watch which is waterproof is Rolex. Why I said that? Because the Quran has so many statements, so many historical things, so, so many things it mentions. It cannot be a word of man. Meaning, if it's from a man, the man would have made mistakes. Because it's talking about the particular so, so, book, talking about the Quran. So, th so this, this is, is how you understood logic. it. Right. Uh, this is basic logic here. If you have a statement of the form, if A, then B, it's logically equivalent if, to if not B, then A. They are logically no. equivalent statements. Yes, they are. No. This is basically. I don't logic. think I, I. I don't think I give a very good example. Okay, I'll give another example. Uh, there's a particular car. If you drive going through the desert and the forest, if this car wasn't a particular mate, if it was not, then it would have been spoiled by in that journey. If that the car wouldn't last that journey. That meaning that that we're talking about the particular class of car. That if it, it means if any car lasted that journey, that doesn't mean. That is a particular class, because that journey was so 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 tough journey. Only the the because the, the, it was such a genuine. And now I'm getting the example right, and I'm just not getting example right. Uh, basically, what I, for my go back to my my point. This Quran has so many things in it. It mentioned the history of the past. It's it mentioned uh, the 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 stars, uh, the, the the space, um, the the plants, all these kind of things. A man couldn't have done that. So if the man would have made that story, all these things, he would have definitely made mistakes. So he's talking about the, the book, the Quran. It's not saying if any book has no error, that is from God. It's not saying that. I hope I'm clear what I'm trying to say. Uh, well, you're clear in what you're saying, but you're you're making you're not understanding the logic. So this is called the contrapositive. So if you have a statement that's in the form, if A, then B, and you can put whatever you want in A and B. And you you inverse the order, and you negate both of them. They're logically equivalent statements. They're they're always if, if the first one is true, then the second one is true. If the first one's false, then the second one is false. So which so is the first the, one? Which the is the form second? Of Can the you explain Quran, that? Which is the first one? Which is the second? A, uh, yeah. So if, if the proposition, if if P and it is the traditional way to say it in logical terms, so if the proposition, what's to the if the conditional statement so if p right then q so the q is the result so in this case if uh not from a law then much contradiction what is the proposition so here or yeah well it, yeah it's a propositional statement uh it, it's pro providing a challenge you know have they not considered the have they not pondered on the quran if it wasn't from Allah, the word if makes it a propositional conditional statement, yes. then it would contain much air. It doesn't technically have the word then, but it's an implied then. You can say without then, right? If, if I am hungry, I will eat. If I am hungry, then I will eat. They're equivalent, right? So it's, it's in the form, if a proposition uh, contains much air, I'm sorry, not from a law. <laughs> if not from a law, yeah. then contains much air. So the P is not from a law, the Q is contain much air. You can reverse the order 
and negate both statements. This is called the contrapositive, and they're equivalent. So it's logically equivalent. If not much air, then from a law. No, it's not this saying that why... if anything. It's not saying that if anything has no errors, that's from God. That's what you're implying. The Quran, Quran is not saying that. Quran is not saying that. That the, if anything it's, has no errors, it's from God. That's a, that's what you're implying. Quran is the, not saying the two that. Statements Quran is are talking, logically equivalent. No, they're not. You, you can no, tell me not. it's not saying that all you want, but it's basic logic. They they're equivalent no, statements. Because it's because it's talking about a Quran. It's talking about Quran. People had that Quran in front of them. And they say, if this is not from God, this meaning it has so many things in it. It mentions so many things in right. it. So if, keeping that in mind, it's saying if this is not from God, you'll find many errors in it. For example, if Prophet Muhammad made it up himself, he would have said something about Noah, which would be totally wrong. He would have he would have say something about uh, the, the geology or astronomy. He would have said something. It would have been totally wrong because he had no ideas about this thing because it's from man. Man didn't have that kind of a knowledge. So the Allah is saying this is a falsification test because this is from God. So he has no errors. And you say you, you like it. And I'm, I'm presenting to you. Show me an error in the Quran. Show me an error in the Quran. I, well, I'm telling you an error. We can go to a different one, but I'm telling you an error. And this statement is an error. You can tell no, me that you can did, say, you can say all you want. It's not saying that. But I'm telling you, look up. Do a Google search for compositive. I, I'm not making this up. This is basic logic. It's something you learn in the very first day of a logic class. I mean, okay, I'll, give you know, an, I'll give you another example. You learn in the second. Another, whatever. Example. It's very Let's basic. Say, Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. Let's, Rolls Royce is the car. A Rolls Royce person said, that, like this car, if this is not a Rolls Royce, the journey it went through, it, it would have been, it, it wouldn't last that journey if it wasn't a Rolls Royce. Yes? So it is talking about that car is Rolls Royce. That's why it lasted all that journey. The, I think this is a simple example I made it. So that's what Allah is talking about this Quran. Yeah, well, this actually, Quran, your example, this, <laughs> your, this your Quran examples are is excellent from, because they 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 make the same air as the Quran makes. <laughs> but you don't oh. believe me that the statements are equivalent. So I don't know <laughs> what I can do. You want me to you want me to bring up a logic website? No. No, no, no. Uh, do you understand my example? That particular journey you took, it only I, would have been Rolls Royce. Yeah, Rose I understand taken your example just fine. Only if the, only Rose 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 okay, so your it. statement is if this wasn't a Rolls Royce, it would have failed the journey, right? That's your statement. If this wasn't a Rolls Royce, but you need to understand what was the journey. What was the journey? So this is the Quran, what Quran has in it. What Quran has in it, if any other human being wrote it, it would have made a mistake. So it doesn't mean that any book has no error is from God. It's not saying that. You need to understand the meaning because it's talking, it's talking about the Quran here. But the, you need to understand what Quran so, contains. Okay, so are you saying? Uh, let me help you out here. Saying this is not generally true. That it's only true of the because it's talking about the Quran. It's not talking about any book. It's talking about the Quran. If this right. meaning the Quran is not from God, you would have found many right. errors in it. I was talking about okay. specifically about so that. I'm trying to help you out here. I'm trying to help you out here. What you're trying to say is, I think you're trying to say that it isn't always true. Thing. If I said if uh, if this book that I have in front of me here didn't or wasn't from God, then it would contain many errors. You would say that that's an invalid claim, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the books of math, sometimes they, they have no errors at all. That doesn't mean they're from God. All right. So you, know? you, you finally, you finally switch from claiming that the, the statement is not an error to special pleading. No, I'm God saying, this is, I, I, to I say from the beginning, is. this is precisely about the Quran. Mm -hmm. It's talking about, about the Quran, that this book, what it has, it man wouldn't have this kind of a thing. This wouldn't be a work of a man. This is talking about the Quran. It's not talking about any book. I said it from the beginning. It's talking about the Quran, only for the Quran. It's not saying any book without error is from God. It's not saying that. You imply. Ever, you want to explain to him what special pleading is? 
I'll just I'll I'll read it to him. Uh, special pleading is an argument in which the speaker deliberately ignores aspects that are unfavorable to their point of view. I think I, I couldn't do better than the actual definition. So you or I'll put it differently. I'll, I'll put it differently. Mm -hmm. Admitting that something is true or the opposite of whatever you're arguing. So in this case, that it's <laughs> false in general. But in this one special case, it's true. So you you agree that that statement is generally not true. If this book is not from Allah, it will contain much air. You agree that in general, that statement's not true, but you say it's true for the Quran. This is called special pleading. No, uh, uh, what I'm saying is, this is because of what Quran has in it. The people have what the Quran is being saying, whatever all the, all the knowledge the Quran has in it, that could not be a work of man. If the man tried to say all these things, he would have made many errors. That's what he's saying. Because it's from God, that's why he has no errors. Because people were saying, this is your work, Muhammad. It's not from God. So God said, no, this is a falsification test I'm giving you. This is the book, what it contains. If it was a work of a man, he would have made many errors in it. He would have made many mistakes in it. But God doesn't make mistakes. That's what he's saying there. It's not saying as what you say is general rule for every other book. It doesn't say that. I actually wanted to, uh, the topic you have to convince you something about Islam. I, I, yeah. I, had, a, yeah. I had a point. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll let the, we'll let the uh, special pleading Quranic logical air go and we'll, we'll hear what argument you have to bring. No, 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 no. I, I was just only saying that. I was listening to you. Um, I had something in mind, but uh, I came to answer you. What you just said, I found it very funny that you're implying that it applies to every, any book which has no errors. I mean, I found it funny. Actually, it doesn't say that. It's basically just a falsification test about the Quran. That's what he's saying. You want to say anything, um, Avery? I Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I agree that it's a falsification test about the Quran, but it's it makes a it's a, it, it it automatically also equivocates that, you know, if something has no errors, then it's from Allah. That's the point. That's the, the proof that the Quran is bringing. It has no errors. That, therefore, it's from Allah. So if a book or something has no errors, then it's from Allah. You know no, it's I'm not saying that. Otherwise, Allah says Torah was from God, as in Injil was from God, but Allah says they have distorted it. They distorted, no, he doesn't. It uh, says that. Chapter 5, verse 13 says that. They distorted the words from their places and they forgot. How, How though? Corruption. Corruption happened. No, Jews no, no, have but, done. Nah, was it, was it, was it For example, right. Allah, has, Allah has proven to us in the, in the Quran where are the errors in the Bible. No, One no, 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 no. Is, you said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You said that they distorted the Torah and the Injil, that the Quran says that they distorted. How did they distort it? Does it say no, that no, they no. wrote in it and they, distorted it, or did they lie about what's in it? They distorted the words from their place. It's not talking about the Injil. It's talking about the Torah. Distorted word is for Torah. But for the Injil, the word comes forgotten, and they are forgotten. But yeah, again, forgotten how words. did they distort it? So when you forget they things... Go... When you forget things, what happens? When you forget things, obviously you made mistakes. You make errors if you forget things. That's what Allah is saying in the Quran. They have distorted right. it and they have forgotten. That's for the Jews. For, for right. the Christians, so, they have forgotten. So, yeah, so forgetting is corruption. So when Muhammad forgot such and such surah and such and such verses, then he distorted the Quran in that aspect when he needed somebody mm -hmm. to remind him of those verses. That doesn't no. make any sense. But you said you said that the, you said that the verses you said that the verses said that they distort they distort the book. How is that? What is how how did they distort? Did they distort writing and changing what's in the book? What's in the book, or did they lie, distort with their tongues? But with their tongues, and they also forgot. They, they forgot as well. They forgot okay, as well. So, so when you so nothing when about, you for, nothing about written corruption. Oh yeah, absolutely. Written corruption, uh, verbal corruption, everything. Distortion comes okay, in so distortion, where, where everything say, comes in yeah. there. Yeah, where does it say written corruption? When say distort, distortion has everything in it. It written well, it says they verbal, distort their tongues. They distort the words from their places, from their usage. Yeah, it says they distort with their tongues, so that doesn't mean written distortion. Let me just get the words out. You keep saying that 
okay when you distort from your with your tongues what happened then obviously you you don't leave you it lie about it no you lie about it it doesn't mean you change the scripture it means that you're lying about what the scripture says hmm. let me just read the verse uh, exactly chapter 5 verse 13 we're talking about it hmm. but does that make it's sense uh, if, uh, if I, if it, I doesn't, it doesn't say wrong. tongue it doesn't say tongue why you keep saying the word tongue there well they say I, I read it to you. chapter 5 verse 13 i read it to you so for their breaking of the covenant we curse them and made their hearts harden they distort mm -hmm. word from their places and have forgotten a portion of that of which they were reminded and you will mm -hmm. still observe deceit among them except a few of them but pardon them and overlook indeed allah loves the doers of good so it is says tongue here yeah? it doesn't say the word yeah. tongue Right. So what what I'm saying is when it says that they distort the words from the right places in their meanings, and especially when you go and look at the tafsir, it just says that they are misinterpreting the words. It doesn't say that they okay. wrote in the book or anything like that. And then when you go to chapter four, verse 46, it clarifies explicitly what it means. It says that they distort with their tongues. You actually find that there. Nowhere does it so say anything about master, distorting. Writ written chapter words. four, okay. verse 46 says tongues. Yeah. This verse mm -hmm. doesn't say tongue. This says they distorted the words of the scripture. Yes. From the right so places, you, right? So, just, yeah, so no, how no, did they distort no. is my question. Exactly. Exactly. They, they change it. They, one place was it was there, written something. For example, it says that's Ishmael. Not, that's not what they said. For example, for example, it says Ishmael was the sacrifice. They say Isaac was the sacrifice. No, that's no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You, no, you, one second. No, I'm, wait. I'm, I'm giving no, you but you, No, you're right. going away, Abbas. You're going away from my question. My question is about the verse that you brought trying to prove that it says that the that the scripture has been changed it doesn't say that yes it, it does, does. It, what it, it says what that they distort the words from their from, if they distort the words of the scripture how do they distort exactly. it written wise or do they just lie about it everything lie written everything i tell you why it doesn't, because Allah, it doesn't say i tell you because because listen when you need to understand the scripture you need to understand holistically what in, in mm. every single way is saying that Quran mm. tells us, Quran explains to us where the distortions are, and it tells you where. For example, your Bible says, God has created. You're going away from the point again. I am not going, going away from, away from the from point. The... You have to let me yes, finish my are, point. What, what's the point about? You're not letting me make a point. Point is, I'm going to about, prove that there's what, a distortion point, in your scripture. About going, what point am I making? You're asking me to prove to you if they've done distortion of the scripture uh, written wise. They, they change the words. Uh, yes. No, yes? no, no. My question to you was, show me a verse in the Quran that says that exactly. the scripture the verse. has been this changed. The, the scripture, not them this distorting the with their, not just this... them distorting with their mouths or whatever, that they okay. distort by rewriting. That's what I want no, you to show me. When the Quran is, says that happens. Is... Okay, well, I think you you let me letting me speak. I think uh, you finish and then let me speak. I just want to make don't sure put, that you understand. Don't, Did you try, understand the don't question? try to put word your words in my mouth. I'm going to say exactly what I want to say, and I'm going to prove it to you. Your scriptures are distorted according to the Quran, but you can't ask me to say exactly what you want me to say. But I don't want you dealing with something I didn't ask. You you do I, you understand I'm how that's dealing, a waste of time? I'm dealing the corruption of your scriptures through the Quran. Okay, so when That's I ask you, prove. show me a verse that says that the text of the scripture has been corrupted. Can you show me that? They that have, says that the text of the Torah has been corrupted. They have distorted the scripture. Their scriptures. What do you simply you don't understand? How okay, okay. So like, for example, notice, how, notice how it says. A, a boss, it says a boss. What distorted means? How do you know what kind of distortion it is? Give us some evidence well, I, of the type I, of distortion. Because you can distort things a lot of ways. You need it to be the text. We need evidence this that is, it's the text. This is a, exactly. And I was going to give you evidence before Avery just stopped me to give you evidence. I was going to give you evidence. I'm going to explain to you, show you we'll the evidence where the distortion is. The text. Quran, the distortion Quran, of the text. Quran is saying they have distorted <clears throat> the words of the scripture. Right? Now, question is, can you prove it? Where is the distortion took place according to the Quran? No, that's not For the example, question. That's not the question. What's wrong with you? That's not the question. The question that Boss we're asking you the question is, being asked. <laughs> the question is, what method of distortion is it talking about? Is it Every talking about distorting with the tongue, just lying about it, 
or is it talking about distorting the actual text that's in the book? Which I already one is it talking you that. about? I already answered so you that. You know, no, no, you know, you know, listen carefully. I say every kind of distortion. Didn't I say that? Okay, okay beautiful. Kind. So when I Thank when you. I see, for example, if you were to ask Avery, what does the Quran say when it says this distorts the meaning? I will show you. Oh well, holistically, when we look at it, it says that they distort with their tongues. Because elsewhere we find the same type of language, but it says specifically they distort with their tongues. You'll never see in the in the Quran that it says they distort by changing the actual okay. scripture. It never do says that. Do you agree? With do you me? agree with that? That it never there makes that claim. They, there are not not on those words, as you say, not on those words. Yeah, but do you agree there are many different ways to prove a uh, 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 um, uh, a crime? There are many different ways to prove a crime. Yes. Uh, it depends on what crime you're talking about. For example, uh, there are many other ways you can prove the scripture has been changed. There are many ways. Could be um, verbally word, we're, or could we're be by example. About the claim, we're talking about could the claim. Be, I, the the Quran doesn't claim that the scripture has been changed. It doesn't claim that. Yes, it does. This verse is saying that they have distorted the words of the scripture. Again, you have to prove that the scripture method that has, the Quran is saying is is textually. I already told you as the word you no, asked. You're just asserting so, something. Verbatim. Oh, it doesn't say verbatim. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't say verbatim, but it proves it through examples. Through examples. For example, I was going to quote you before you interrupted me. Your Bible says God has created heaven and earth in six days, and no, and then He rested on the seventh day, and He got refreshed. Your Bible says that. Allah says in the Quran, chapter fifty, verse thirty-eight, He created God heaven and earth. Heaven and earth in six days, and no fatigue has touched him. Does, no does fatigue the Quran has touched him. Tell you that, does your, the Quran tell you it's correct? One second, one second. I, I haven't finished my point. So your Bible say he rested on the seventh day and he got refreshed. Allah says it, no fatigue has touched him. Now, when you get refreshed, what happened actually? You get your energy back. Okay. Refreshed means that you get your energy so, so, back. Your strength okay. back. Uh, Allah say no we, we it. So Allah, it. Allah show through the Quran, your Bible has been corrupted. And there are many examples like that. And one of them is one verse is of the it, Quran. So Abbas. One, one second. Abbas. One, one, one minute. Just last one. You one I, verse of the Quran destroy hundreds of your verses of the Bible. You, what, Allah you, say, have, no, Allah you're not going to another has, example until you Allah has no son. Allah has no son. Your Bible is you're full not, of You're sun, not going sun, to another example, Abbas. We're not listening to you. We're not listening. You need to deal with the first example first. So whenever he says you have son, that's a corruption, according to the Quran. <laughs> He's just going to keep talking. So Abbas, what, does the Quran say it's correcting something? One, you've misquoted the Bible, but let's forget that. Let's pretend that you quoted the Bible accurately. Does the Quran say it's correcting something? Or does it just say something different? Allah says... Because if it doesn't word... say it's correcting something, you can't give it credit for correcting. As my brother earlier says, the Quran says everything is clear, but there are many things that are not clear. Allah says this book is clear for those who who use reason. The people, the those <laughs> no, who, no, who no, use no, no, reason. no, 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 it does so not when say you that. Use reason, it most certainly does not say well, that. It does. It does. Those people who ponder, those people who use reason. There are verses of the Quran. Allah says this is clear for those who use reason. And many all right, let, let's stick to the don't point. Don't you ponder? Here, right? Don't stick, you think? Let's stick. So I'm to, thinking and right, pondering let's upon stick the words. to the verse. Come on, yes. Abbas, let's stop jumping all over the place. Let's stick to the point. You claim that the Quran is making a correction about uh, Allah not needing to be refreshed. Ironically, you just proved that you can distort things without changing the words. You distorted the meaning of the Bible. The Quran says that they distorted the meaning of the Bible. And this is your evidence that the Quran is saying that words have been changed? That, is your is misinterpretation of the actual words of the Bible? Really? That is it. Really? That is the example. Evidence? That is the example. Do you know there are many different kinds of corruption? It, it, except it's an you, invalid example. Can, it proves it, one, it proves that you can distort things without changing the words. And two, it's not actually <laughs> correcting anything. This is the Bible does not say that God needed to refresh himself. That is a nonsense what? interpretation from Muslims based on an archaic meaning of refresh found in the King James. Right. It's so not, what does it mean? It, it doesn't it, mean uh, what you think it means. It, the word meant something different in 1600. There's nothing about me on refreshing. That. Educate me on that when he says he, he rested and he got refreshed. Educate me on that, what it means. 
Yeah, well, what verse do you think says that he rested and got refreshed? Uh, I think Exodus it, 30, it, 31, verse 1. All right, let's. I think so. That's what he says. Give me a second to load the verse. 3117, sorry. 3117. <laughs> Oh, I'm adding Mary to the chat here. There is another Muslim who joined, but he didn't actually connect, so I can't even add him to the stream. Such a shame. But he has been spewing insults in, in the private chat. All right, so 3117. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel in the next six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. On the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Let's yes. take a look at meaning of the word. Look, the, set, the, te, the meaning is to rest from work. It doesn't mean that he was fatigued. It just means the same thing as rested. I can pull up the... Well, no, no, uh, the sorry. word refresh. I, the word refresh. Well, no, no, no. I, sorry, I, I thought I was sharing my screen and I wasn't. So it has a different meaning than needed to recover fatigue that you claim that it means refreshed. it just means it just means to refrain from work it, it's this is hebrew parallelism often an idea is repeated to in different words to emphasize it so when it says he rested and it says he refreshed they mean the same thing <laughs> they're, they're parallel words that are, it, are used to, to emphasize the point So now that we got that answered. No, no, you didn't. You one, second, one second, one second. No, 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 no. Can you please go no, back no, to the no, first question? No, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong, no, no, you're wrong, no, no, you're wrong. No, 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 Why am I no, wrong? No, because what you, I, what I think I know to, more about I'm, Hebrew I'm than you do. You. I'm going to refute you. What he's you. doing is he's, he's getting I'm away from the Quran. No, 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 no. He's getting away from the Quran, what it says. I am going to refute you. He made an important claim that the Quran does not say that the text of the books were corrupted. He did. He said it doesn't say that. You see what you so, did? You, you say rested and refreshed so, the same so, thing. Yes, so Abbas, see words. what I did. I they answered your words. point, even though it was irrelevant. I, you I showed didn't. you you were mistaken, even you though didn't. it's irrelevant. I'm sorry because you say. didn't address that the Quran doesn't claim it's making a correction. You said this is an example of how it makes a correction. That's using your knowledge, or in this case, incorrect knowledge. It it's is. not something from the Quran. We need something where the Quran tells you how it's correcting things. With respect, Hades, you know what? How many, how many years I've been talking to Christians at Speaker's Corner? I can really exactly see which direction you're heading and what you're trying to do. I'm sorry. You can't uh, do that with me. I, I'm, I'm okay. going to I'm just going to what correct I'm trying you. To do, what I'm trying to get you to do is defend your argument. The word. So word, if, I, if I you think, think that's I think invalid. Avery exactly see what's happening and he want to run away from that. I'm not going to let you run away. If you want to, if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. But I'm going to stick on that. I'm going to show you. Unless you, you all know, right, Ab Abbas, I would like to do you a favor. I would like to do you a favor and help you. I don't need your favor. And help uh, you tedious, to correct tedious. Muhammad and the tedious. Quran, which is wrong. Need, tedious, so the Quran help. says, Abbas, listen. It, the Quran on, says. You need extra help. Hold on a second, Mary. Hold on a second, mm -hmm. Abbas. You would not shut up when I wanted you to, and kept insisting on going on to another point. When I said that we need to address the first point and you just kept trying to talk over me. So yeah, Mary gets a chance to talk now. So you can just sit there in silence and, and wait for Mary to make her point. Okay, so we are going to learn the Quran according to Abbas. So in Surah al madiyah it says, uh, Ayah 46 starting, um, that <clears throat> Jesus came confirming the law that had been set for. Uh, before him, we sent him the gospel, which is a confirmation of the law, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then it says, "Let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein." Present tense. But Abbas tells us that the people of the gospel didn't have the gospel at that time, so Allah made a mistake here. And Abbas, fortunately, is here to correct poor, stupid Allah who didn't know that the people of the gospel can't judge by it because it's been corrupted. So let me fix this ayah for poor, stupid Allah who doesn't know what he should have put in his Quran. So what he should have said, thank you, Abbas, is let the people 
of the gospel not to judge by what Allah has revealed therein because it's been corrupted and you don't know what it is. And it goes on to actually say, if any do fail to judge by what Allah has revealed, then they are those who rebel. But what he meant to say is, you will necessarily rebel because you can't judge by the gospel because you don't have it. So thank you for correcting poor, stupid Allah who didn't know what to put in his own book and should have said something else. Uh, again, this continues wrongly because Allah is so stupid. He didn't know to tell people that it was corrupted. And he says, uh, to thee we have sent the scripture and truth confirming the scripture that came before it, certifying. That means that it says that it's true. But instead, what it should have said is that to thee we have sent the scripture and truth correcting the scripture that came before it because it was corrupted. But no, it says that it's saying the same thing that's proving it true. So poor stupid Allah just didn't know that it was corrupted. And it's supposed to be guarding it in safety. And by that it means, again, not correcting it, but rather, but rather preserving it by saying the same thing is what it means. But Allah was stupid. He didn't know that he should have said that it, he was fixing it. So judge between them by what Allah hath revealed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then it says, to each among you, we prescribed a law in an open way. If Allah had so willed, he would have made you a single people. But he wants to test you in what he hath given you. So strive in a race in all virtues. Well, he should not have said that because they don't have uh, the same. They don't have the correct law and said they have a different law. So poor, stupid Allah here is telling them to follow their scriptures when he shouldn't have. He should have said, stop following your corrupted scriptures. Instead, listen to Muhammad, who is going to correct you. So now that we have a boss to correct poor, stupid Allah, who didn't know what to put his Quran and accidentally said the opposite of what he meant. Now we have clarity. So let's go ahead and publish our Quran according to Abbas that corrupts all, corrects all of these poor, stupid mistakes that poor Allah put in there because he didn't know that the scripture that they have with them, which he keeps saying, judge by what the scripture that you have with you, the scripture that you have with you, the scripture that you have with you, that he shouldn't have said that. The scripture that you lost is what he meant to say. So now that we have a corrected Quran by Abbas, we know what it should say. And Abbas is now Allah and has fixed poor stupid Allah because Abbas knows better. Thank you. All right. You're up, Abbas. Oh, well, should I go to her level or should I stay on my level on high high level? Well, um, I, I would go, prefer that you elevate your argument to me. Let's not, level, let's not go into because because she was not talking about like. she was not talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the glorious. She was talking about some Allah who is stupid, according to her. So I can't answer to that. I follow the Allah who is the glorious, the almighty. So I'm sorry, I can't answer to that. Oh, okay, so you're saying that Allah was correct when he wrote these things? That's my question. So Allah was correct all along when he wrote this. Okay. You, you, you're not correcting him. He's not stupid. Listen, he actually knew the correct answer. That's what you're I, saying? To, you, to talk to you, I have to come to your level, and I can't. I, so you're saying that Allah way. is not stupid and he me, knew what he wrote. It will take me a long time to come to your level. I can't. So, so, so Mary, don't worry. A boss admitted that he's not on your level. Of course, he's trying to imply that he's way above <laughs> you, but we know oh, no, the, the actuality here. He, he is no, on otherwise, to, I have to, okay. otherwise, I have I'm to call to this stupid woman. What this stupid woman is talking about, she's so emotional. I mean, I have to talk to like her. There, I don't want Abbas, to do that. there's no emotion. I'm better than that. There's no <laughs> Well, she's calling my so, okay, so now I'm glad, Abbas. She's calling her creator all these names. So, I mean, how, so Abbas, I'm glad my, that you have now said is, that Muhammad is not wrong, if, right? If any, okay, so Muhammad, you, that peace, Allah was not wrong when he said this. So this is what Allah said, and you said this is correct. So when Allah said yes. that the, the people of the gospel earlier? should judge by what Allah has revealed in there, then Allah meant that the people of the gospel should judge by what Allah has revealed in the gospel, which means that they have what Allah has revealed in the gospel. Because okay, if they I do not have what have. Allah has revealed in the gospel, then your Allah is stupid and put the wrong thing in the Quran. But since you're saying he's not stupid, then he's saying that the people of the gospel have what Allah has revealed because Allah says that they do. Okay, I'll, I'll take one word from her. I'll, I'll use the word stupid. Stupid is your understanding that you understand like that. That's stupid. If you any have any sense, you, you understand. Allah says, 
follow the gospel, what Allah have revealed therein. Meaning there you still have the words of the gospel. The Allah's words are still in there. But it's where with the word of men and the word of people. Allah okay, so there. so the so, so Allah Oh, so Allah, Allah's what Allah meant, hang on, you're correcting Allah you? again. So, so let's fix what Allah said. So Allah told people, Allah. no, so uh, he said that Mary, the, Mary, the okay. gospel. Mary, Allah, yeah. it's okay, Abbas already corrected me. Allah once. He already told us that. Well, that he, he's Allah fixing did. it. He's fixing yeah. him again. So now he, whenever he says that uh, when Allah says he sent Jesus the gospel and that the people of the gospel should reveal by what Allah has revealed therein, which yeah, he yeah, says yeah, is the whole go. thing. It's the gospel, what right? Therein, not what what he should have there. said not is said, the people of the Allah gospel said, should know which said. parts Allah actually revealed and which parts Thank were corrupted, much. and they shouldn't reveal, they much. shouldn't judge by what they have, mm -hmm. but rather by this magical thing that they have no ability to reconstruct, apparently, according to you. But Allah that's okay. If you want to keep correcting Allah because he keeps making such terrible mistakes, you can do Allah that. Um, I just would not do that as a Muslim. So, what well, did... Uh, it's, 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 all it's all right. Five, it's all right. Five, uh, if, if a boss wants to correct Allah, we'll let him correct I'm Allah. Not. Absolutely the, the, not. Allah, <laughs> in his perfectly clear word, that's very easy to understand. Chapter 5. He si kind of sort of got the words right. If you change them around a little bit, you add a couple things to it. Then it'll be perfectly clear. That's that's fine. That's fine. May I may I allow to defend my position or what your yes, claims go, are? Go ahead. So okay. Mary, first don't all, interrupt. First him. Let all, him finish his point this time. First of all, you 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 run away mm -hmm. from my challenge, which I say your God says he got refreshed. Mm -hmm. You say refresh okay, refreshed is the same words. They are two different words. They are not the same mm -hmm. words. They're two different words. And they I can show you the same word is used for being tired mm -hmm. when you get refreshed. So you blaspheme Where? against your Bible, blaspheme against God that he got tired. Where? My God says, no, he didn't ever get tired. Anyway, mm -hmm. that, that's by the by. Now I'm going to answer you that. Chapter 5, verse 46 has other verses as well. So when you go mm -hmm. to verse 48, what does it say? Mm -hmm. And we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book in truth, confirming mm -hmm. that which preceded it of the scripture mm -hmm. and as a criterion over it. So if it those books criterion. were so... No, it, it doesn't, doesn't say, say criterion. criterion. We've already covered this. Didn't you? Go ahead, God Logic. We've Maybe. already covered it. Yeah, it does not mean criterion. Okay, yeah. so, okay, so what the Torah is also Muhammad called by that same word. Okay, Muhaymin meaning yardstick, a control, a, a something that controls. No, it doesn't. A watcher. It doesn't mean okay, that. Watcher. It means guardian. There you go, a guardian. Ka, okay, Ka, criterion is Furqan. I agree with you. Okay, I, the, the mm -hmm. translation I was reading, the Furqan is criterion. Fine, you're right. But it says mm -hmm. guardian over it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what does guardian is, mean? Oh, one second. One second. Once if something is, is totally perfect. Yes. It doesn't need a guardian. It can guard itself if it's totally perfect. Meaning. And why does Allah have to you, guard the Quran? Me, mean, mean, meaning. Yes. Allah guard the Quran. If it's perfect, okay. he doesn't need to be guarded. Allah say, Allah say it will be preserved. Allah will preserve it. He, he doesn't have to guard it if it is perfect. Right. You just said that. Because Quran is the last book. There's no other book to come. The Quran so what? It's came perfect. after. It doesn't need to, it doesn't Quran, need to be guarded came, if it's perfect. Quran came, after. Quran came after Torah and Injil. Okay, so it's, it's the last book. So what? So for that, you said, so for that, you said that if something is perfect, it doesn't need to be guarded. So, yet you just admitted that the Quran is guarded even though it's perfect. Okay, how, so do, how do you understand? That, how, that logic how, is out the window, right? How do you, how do you understand that? If the how Quran is saying... It? If Quran saying one thing, Allah has no son. The Bible is full of the uh, God as son. If, how you say that these things are both the same? They both can't be same. Which is so no obvious. Like that 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 Quran, you're, you're running away Quran again from, the, from your claim. You're still. You, you keep doing this. I'm showing Stop you the errors in your book. from what the Quran actually claims. I don't care what error you think is in the Bible. Show me the error that the Quran says is in there. Does the Quran say that there's there's an error in there? Quran is proving the errors. That's what I'm trying to show you. Does the Quran, Quran say that there's an the error errors. or not? Quran Does the Quran says, say that there's an error? Yes, it's, they have what distorted. What we see is that the Quran says it confirms what's there. They have distorted the scripture and they have forgotten the portion of it. What does it mean hmm. if you forgot the portion? How you? What it means if you forget? How, that means how they don't have it anymore. It. That means you don't have anymore. If you think really? that, no. that okay. means you still have it. No, 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 no. 
If, no. if, that's what he said. That's what he says. If they, if they yeah, forgot for it and the they portion. don't have it anymore, if they forgot it and they don't have it anymore, then why but, is Allah telling them to uphold it? Why is Allah telling them to recite it truthfully and to judge by it? If they don't have it anymore. No, you're wrong again. It, it doesn't say they didn't have it at all. They said they've forgotten the portion of it. That means they have something in it. So Allah says, what is revealed from it, just follow what is revealed in it. How you follow it? You have Quran in front of you. You have the messenger in front of you. Messenger is telling you something. Go home and see what he's saying. Yes, that is in our, our book as well. There is only one God. Okay, so, so, he's saying, so where does the Quran, so they, where does the Quran is, say that they don't have a portion of it? No, no, Quran says they've forgotten the portion of it. They distorted right, it. So where does the Quran say the that a portion of it is gone? If I if I forgot if you Abbas Abbas when Muhammad forgot a portion of the Quran, does that mean that the Quran was gone? You you going to you why you want to hide behind the Quran every time when I challenge your Bible? I I'm going with uh, your claim. Wait no, wait wait wait, wait hold on I, I need to say something here Abbas we were talking about the Quran you tried to change the subject to the Bible you don't get to say why are you trying to talk about the Quran. When you were the one who tried to change the subject, we were talking about the Quran first. I entertained your your attack against the Bible, but we were you, talking about the Quran from the start. So um, you also no you also falsely said, a boss, a boss. You just said that what this is teaching. Hang on, you just said that what this is teaching is that you should listen to Muhammad and follow what he says, but that's not what. This very section says, it says to each among you, we have prescribed a law in an open way. And if a law had willed, he would have made you a single Uma, a single community. But his plan is to test you and what you, he has given you, you know, individually, right? So strive in a race against all virtue. The goal of all what of you is a law and is that he will know that the truth and the matters in which you dispute and he commands this the judge between them by what Allah has revealed was Allah revealed the Torah and the Injil and the Quran according to this passage now you say we, we, we so, make you one umma. so you what, said what you reading there? so it, it you're saying that what that you ought what they ought to be doing what Allah is telling them to do here is just listen to Muhammad and follow his and follow Islam but this is saying no you should all do your own thing, your separate communities, and I made you that way. And you should all compete in virtue. Yes, and end of the day, you follow the word of God and not word of, word of men. So Which would be the, the angel, according the to this. Of, how you follow the word of God, because you still have in your Bible word of God in there. But it's mixed with other words. Like Allah never yeah, says and about, the Paul, to magically about, know about the letters of John. All these things, where they come from? Allah yeah, how are we supposed to magically know which parts are good and which parts aren't? And if you're going to you tell follow... us judge by the Quran, that's not yes. what the Quran says. The Quran says to judge by the gospel. So you're telling yes, us to judge and it tells... a portion of the gospel we have. Allah also says about the Quran that this is for Khan. Furqan is a criterion to judge right so, from wrong. Okay, so if so something is a, Quran, is a Furqan, then it's perfect, you right? Must, anything goes against the Quran, you reject it. Okay, so if it is a Furqan, if anything goes against the Furqan, you have to reject it, right? Yes. You're going to yes. say that. Okay, yes. well, the Torah is also called the Furqan in Surah 25, verse uh, 35. So the Torah is absolutely correct and perfect. It is a criterion by which everything else should be measured according to you, if that's what it means according to you. Yes, yes, and do. so the Torah, the, the everything else has to submit yes. itself to the Torah. And the yes, Furqan can never be corrupted according to you. That's what it means. No, no, so the then the Torah the is absolutely perfect. So I, I'm I, glad I, that you've said I, that we should take I, Torah supremacy. Now, let's read the verse. Where does it say the Torah is the Furqan? Oh, wow. You All don't right, know? So we're looking at 2535, correct? Uh, Mary, yep. we're looking at 2535. Is that what you said? That's what she said, I think. All right. I'm, I'm pulling it up. It doesn't say Furqan 2535. And, and I tell you one more thing. Torah was, if even if obviously we believe and it was revealed, uh, it was. Uh, it was uh, the still here. Sorry. 
Who's that? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, I added you to the scene, uh, Wolf, but Abbas is currently talking. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm saying that even if the Torah... Oh, sorry. It's 253. 253. Any book revealed in his time is, is a criterion. Obviously, Moses was the criterion of that time and his word was. But when the Quran is the last book, now Quran is the Furqan. So Furqan of the time... Where does it say that the Torah is no longer everything. the Furqan? Yes, that's what the Quran said. They have distorted. Where, they have, where does they have the forgotten. Quran say that the Torah is now no longer the criteria? No, it doesn't have to say that. Why? Because the, if the Quran saying what the Quran doesn't say, if, if the Quran is the Furqan, what does it mean? Anything goes against the Quran is For who? Wrong. Because the Quran then that means that anything that goes against the Torah <laughs> is also <laughs> false. You silly goose! Right. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no You no, can't no. have it both ways. You can't have it both ways, Abbas. You, uh, you, you said that if this word is used, that means that anything against it is false. We're now looking at listen the Quran saying that about the Torah. Look what he's saying. Look at the words what he's saying. We when we gave Moses the scripture and criterion, he's talking about the past. Uh -huh. We have given him the scripture and criterion, meaning when Moses right. had it, that was and, that and when was did criterion. Moses lose that? No, that was the criterion for Moses when Moses had it. It has to be criterion to judge right from wrong. But over right. the time, so, when, we, when you, they say about, they have said it it and you, you said that the criterion, there is no criterion is anymore. It's so is it only perfect it for Moses and not perfect for Muslims? What happened? No, of course not, because people have distorted in the middle. The people along the way, Jews and... Okay, Christians so once again, we're back to Allah being stupid and saying the wrong things. You you told us that no, no, what no, uh, Furqan I, I can't, meant I can't talk was that lady, it was because absolutely perfect and that it corrects everything else. But then you said it only means that whenever it's the, the Quran, because that's the last thing. Uh, you know, whenever Allah says that no one you can change his word, so what you mean, what what, Moha, what Allah should have said is, no one can change my word except for everything that I said before the Quran, which actually can get changed and corrupted because those parts of my words are absolutely corruptible and anyone can change them around because my word has no power unless it happens to be the Quran. And that's what you meant. But you accidentally, but he accidentally said that no one can change his word, period. That was just an oopsie. You your 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 version of Allah really does make a lot of mistakes. Ha, 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 ha. So, so funny. So, I want to laugh later. Uh, Abbas, Abbas, I just want to go with this slowly with you. Uh, verse forty eight, because you're saying that the the Quran is the criterion. You saw that it says uh, that the no, Torah. No, it's not criterion. It's criterion. You corrected me. It's not criterion. You're right. It's not criterion. No, no, uh, but it's it, the okay, guardian. But okay, so it's the guardian. Some, somewhere else. Somewhere Torah. else it says it's criterion. Yes. 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 Somewhere else. And uh, so the the Quran is a criterion. Uh, it, it calls the, the says that the Torah is a criterion, right? And then in verse forty eight, it says that Allah has given to each group, the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, their own law. He's prescribed to them their own law that they're supposed to judge by and live by, right? If he wanted to, he could have made them one ummah, one people, but he didn't want to do that. So. He gave them their own law to live by and to use as their criterion. So even with Muhammad being there, what is the criterion that the Jews are supposed to live by, according to verse 48? Well, what we are saying is, as a Muslim, we believe that Allah, everyone, we Allah, first of all, Allah says everyone is a Muslim. Abraham was a Muslim, Isaac was a Muslim, Muslim meaning the one who submitted his will to God. So if you are a submitter of God to his will, you must follow every prophet whenever he comes with a message. You must follow every prophet. So before Muhammad Wasallam, whatever Christians was following the true message of Jesus, they were Muslims. And before Jesus, all the Jews following the true message of Moses, they were Muslim. So now since the Muhammad came, so those Jews and those Christians, they must follow whatever Allah told them in the past. You obey a God and his messengers. So that is what Allah is saying. So now Jews and Christians have no choice but to obey the last messenger. You can't, this doesn't okay. mean that Jews, you stay Jews, Christians, you stay Christians. No. So, Otherwise, so, what's the so point they, of the, of the prophet? To, yeah. Sorry? If they're supposed to obey the last prophet, why does Allah then say here that he prescribed to each of them their own law, and if he wanted to, he would have made them one people following one thing, but didn't.
I, I I need to read that again. If that's exactly what he's saying, how you putting? That's exactly what it says, word for word, brother. Can can we read the verse again? Five forty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. read it. Yeah, and we have revealed to you the book in truth, confirming that which preceded it of the scripture, and as a guardian over it. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed, and do not follow their inclinations away from what has come to you of the truth. To each of you, we prescribed a law and a method. Um, I'm just reading what it says. Okay. Had Allah willed, he would have made you one nation. But mm -hmm. to test you in what he has given you, so race to good, to Allah is your return altogether. And we will inform you concerning that over which you used to differ. Okay, now, um, some things you need to a little bit ponder and think deeply, but I'll, on a very quick um, glance of this verse, I see it as Allah saying, Allah could have made everybody from the beginning as one following as one scripture, Quran, or just like what the laws Muhammad has. But to test them time and again, give them one law, the next messenger came, he added a little bit more into it, to test them, are they really following God or not? Or are they going to stick by their old laws? So if they if they're following God, really, they're going to follow the new commandments as well. So with time, that's not what he Allah, says, though. No, this this is what I uh, this is how I understand this verse. Allah said, "We would have made you one nation," meaning from the beginning you had one message, and it never changes. So the same Ramadan fasting, same five salahs. No, for different nations they have different rules. So over time, Allah changed it slowly by slowly to test you. Will you follow the next messenger, or are you going to stick? By your old message for example jews they refuse uh, jesus they say no we're going to stick by the law of moses we're not following you whatever you're saying it we're not going to follow your message as well they they rejected him but they should have followed the next messenger as jesus came along and teach them slightly things differently so muhammad came along they need to follow him so allah is testing them are they going to follow this messenger or are they going to reject him i understood this verse like this do you have anything to say about so it? You, you understood it to nothing in what it says. Like your your interpret your reinterpretation of your own scriptures of bosses is exhausting because you, I actually you, heard that from a scholar. You, you literally you, you literally change everything that Allah says in his verses. That's very, <clears throat> very well renowned we scholars you, say something like this. Is he says that we prescribe to you, to each of you, a law to follow. They all have their own law that they're supposed to be following. And if he wanted to, he would have he would have joined them all. If he wanted to, but as a test, he did, he decided not to do that for their own test, for their own individual walk, according to the laws that he has given them. That's what it says. It doesn't say what nothing is, about what is the, what following is the, the next messenger. It doesn't say nothing about, uh, 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 you know, you're supposed to abandon your law, your law now and, and go like that. You're literally saying the opposite of what the verse says. You're saying what that is, the verse really means that they're supposed to abandon the law that God gave them and follow a new one, while this one says we prescribe to each of you your own law as and to I, test you. If we wanted to, we would have made you one, but we decided not to. How in the world do you do that? There are some laws that are universal. They will never change. For example, even you believe that. Ten commandments will never change. You Christians still follow ten commandments. But the other commandments, 500-something or 600-something, you don't follow them anymore, most of them. So there are some universal laws, they never change at all. But there are other rules and regulations Allah changed with time, established slightly more. For example, the olden days, people maybe didn't do ablution as well or things like that. So Allah says slightly change uh, new laws just to test you. Are you going to follow more? Are you going to follow more? Or are you just going to say, no, 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 I'm going to stick by that. So this is this is why I see this is a test. And I heard from a very well-known known scholar uh, saying this is the interpretation of this verse. This is the test. The new person come, you must always follow the commandment of God. And the Jews failed that test when the Jesus came with the new messages. And you actually believe that. You say the Jews' laws are gone. It's a new covenant. Jews don't believe that. Jews don't believe the new covenant is coming to come to the Gentiles. They believe the new covenant is also for the Jews as well. It's not for the... But you say no. So you, you also say, you also change it. The God who used to be full of wrath is, is full of mercy and love. The, the God of the Old Testament full of wrath. So you also change, but now you say that if Muslims can't change. Muslim God has to be, everybody has to be different. No, Allah is saying with time, 
you just everybody have different laws but that was a test for them this is how i understood it yeah this is my so answer i'm not going to change my you, answer what, what what i heard from you just now is a straw man and misconception of what you think christians say as opposed to what our scripture actually says and as opposed to what i what we're talking about what your quran actually says i'm not saying oh allah has to change or allah has to be this way or this certain way i'm not doing none of that we are literally just talking about what the verse just told you that he prescribed to each people their own law period point blank so if allah prescribed to each person their own law that's what the quran says and if he wanted to he would have made us all one people following one way but he decided not to as a test so for you to take that and change it and say well what this really means is is that they're not supposed to follow the prescribed law that allah gave them in the first place and they're supposed to follow the now the new prophet and obey the new law that that came down ignore what the past law is that's what you're saying that it says you're absolutely going against what the verse just said and you're insulting my intelligence mary's intelligence and thaddeus's intelligence by trying to uh bring us along that interpretation that's silly bro that's not what Listen, the verse says do you agree with me you need to understand the scripture you have to understand intertextually and holistically yes some things yes. you have to understand holistically now you know yes. the whole quran is full of <clears throat> allah will not accept any religion except islam telling jews and christians how bad they are what they're doing is so wrong and even they call them the worst of the creatures jews and christians and the and the mushrik if mm. this was the case that jews and christians just do you follow your religion and we follow our religion if that was the whole point so, I mean, if the, that verse means that, the whole Quran and the whole life of Prophet his struggle was for no means. If that means you say whatever you are, no. He tried to convert all the people to become Muslim. So if you are, no. yeah, this is this understanding is a very shallow understanding of the verse. Were, How were, you the, were the people, were, were the Christians considered Muslims according to the Quran? Were the Christians considered Muslims? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, the Muslim meaning the one who submit his will to God. The one who you can answer the question. Allah. Can you answer the question? Were the Christians, according to the Quran, considered Muslims? Considered part of Islam? No, not now. In the past, yes. I didn't ask not now. I, I'm asking according to the Quran. Yes. According to the Quran, were the Christians yes. a part of the fold of Islam in totality? No. After the Quran revealed, no. In the past, yes. Okay, and neither were the Jews. The Jews were also not considered a part of Islam. Same thing. After the advent of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the no, only Muslim is the one who says Shahada. The otherwise, there is none of them is Muslim. Got it. Got it. Got it. So these, so before before Muhammad came on the scene, they were all Muslims, considered a part of Islam. Sorry, can you repeat that? Were the Jews and the Christians considered? A part of the fold of Islam before Muhammad came on the scene. Um, some of them, not all of them. Those who were believers, those who were worshiping right. Jesus, believers, the, the ones who were not hypocrites, the Jews and the Christians who believed their scriptures and followed their scriptures, were they considered Islam of uh, uh, Muslims? Yes, yes, In totality. All right. Yes. So the Quran considers the Jews and the Christians to be a part of the fold of Islam, the ones who truly follow their scriptures and follow uh, and uphold their scriptures, not being hypocrites, right? Again, the Muslim is the one who submits his will to God. If you deny the will of God, you're not Muslim anymore. Got it. So the Christians and the Jews who submitted their will to God and followed their scriptures correctly were part of the fold of Islam, correct? Not after the advent of Islam. Okay. No. So after the advent of Islam, that's when Jews and Christians, like, there was a separation. There's Muslims, and then there's Jews, and then there's Christians. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, exactly. Muslim yeah. is the only so, one who follow Prophet Muhammad as his messenger. They accept he's a messenger of God. Otherwise, oh, so they're not Muslim not, anymore. So it's not just admit, submitting to the will of Allah anymore. It's about submitting to Muhammad as the messenger. No, the will of Allah is this, that Muhammad is the messenger of God. This is his will. Okay. This is not so, a, out of the will so of God. So it's not just, so being a Muslim is not just submitting to God. It's also submitting to Muhammad as being no. the, the, the messenger. No, 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 no. Submitting to God is following everything God said. That's what submitting means. Submitting doesn't mean, oh, I believe in you. 
Meaning, were the I, Christian whatever, scriptures part whatever of what you Allah say, said? Whatever you say, I submit to that. And Allah says, the Quran is the word of Allah. The Allah says, is Muhammad is the messenger Allah of Allah. Said. Sorry? Were the Christian scriptures a part of what Allah spoke? There's a truth in it still, yes. Some of it. But it I'm mixed asking, with a lot of... I'm, I'm telling, asking, I'm when it was revealed, was it part of... Was it what Allah spoke? Was it Allah's revelation? When the Injil was given to Jesus... There was a revelation from God to Jesus, and Jesus. So the Christians who followed the revelation that was given to Jesus from Allah, they were a part of the fold of Islam, correct? Of course, yes, they will. They okay, will. so believing Definitely. Christians were also considered a part of Islam. Believing Christians, Christian mean the follower of Christ. Yes, those who were following the Christ in the true sense, they were Muslims. Yes. All right. So now, if a Christian at, at Muhammad's time. The, when it calls them Christians and it tells them to believe in the scripture that they have and to believe in the scripture that has also been that has also come down to Muhammad, is it saying for them to convert or, or, or is it saying them for them to also just believe in addition to what they already have in the new revelation as well? No, in that verse, basically he's telling them, look, go to your gospel, go to your Torah, the one which is revealed from God, and then you will see that the Muhammad is the prophet of God. So when you will see that, when you analyze it, then you will admit you will have no choice but to become Muslim. That's what he's saying. This word. <laughs> where does it? Where does this? Where, where does it tell them to become Muslim? No. Where does it say that? Be no, because the holy. This is this. There's another way of guiding you. Can you Listen, show me in the Quran doubting, where, where the Quran encourages doubting, them you, to become Muslim? Quran is all over the Quran. Allah says, Allah, "There's no religion show me. except." Uh, there's a verse of the Quran, yeah, except Islam, there, there's no other religion will be accepted but Islam. But uh, uh, again, you, you know Islam, Islam existed before Muhammad came on the scene. So they were already in Islam. No, no. Islam is the submission of God, submission to the will of God. You must understand that. So Good. So the all they had the to time do of... believe that Muhammad is a prophet and they could still follow their own scriptures as the Quran says. No, 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 no. How okay, good. How so can... show me where the Quran tells them to become Muslim. I, I just tell you, the Quran says there's no religion accepted but Islam. So show, Islam me the, the, Islam, show me where the Quran says that they're out of Islam. Islam show me the where time, the Quran makes a distinction between Christians and, and Islam. When Allah says they are the worst of the creatures, talking about Jews and the Christians. Why? And, and or Because they were, they were just uh, enemies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and they were fighting against him. They were struggling against right. him. Yeah, they, he, yeah right. so they were the worst of the creatures. So, and right. All, so for there, them there, going there are actually against, many verses. So for them going against and not believing in the new revelation, they are the worst of creatures now, right? Not not only that, they were also struggling, they were also fighting, they were enemies of Islam. They were enemies okay, of good. Muhammad. Yes. Okay, cool. So what about the Christians who are closest to the Muslims? Were they also the worst of creatures? No, they were not. They were not. Why not? Because they were they were not enemies of Islam, yeah, but they were wrong, but they were not the worst of the creatures because the worst of the creatures is not every it says, that they, not, it says that a portion of them do good and believe, and he still calls them Christians. Among them, some are believers, but well, most of them are not. Among them, some are right. Some so are among believers. them, among who? Among Christians, there are some. So some Christians who, are believers, even though no, the meaning, Quran is calling them Christians. No, 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 no among meaning. They, they were still on truth. Their people are still on truth. They don't believe Jesus as God. Yeah. They, they don't believe on all these kind of uh, uh, other things with blasphemies of, towards God, whichever the Bible says. They don't believe in that. They believe in the truth. Yes. But they, they were not Muslims. They, they were the good people among Christians, but they were not mushrik. Remember, Allah says, Allah will not forgive one sin, which is shirk. So they were not mushrik. Like you, you are, give, uh, in, my, in, in, my, in, in my view, in my view, in my view, so they were no mushrik. That's what he's saying. End of the day has to be Islam. You have to follow Islam. End of the day. That's it. That's Quran is very clear on that. Right. The life but of prophet chapter, is very clear. Chapter two that. says even Jews, Christians, and Sabians will go to heaven if they believe they have nothing to fear. He's talking about the past. Jews, Sabians of the past. Say the past. Not not it not of the, the present. Past. Just take out the, the words. Past. Take out the words. He's not talking about in the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I bet. He's talking, bet. he's talking about the past tense. I'm pretty sure about I that. Bet. He's talking... I bet. I bet. I bet. Yes. So we have two so... other callers. You want to move on? 
Avery. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just I just wanted to say one quick thing. If you see the justice in the Quran, the the Islam in the justice in Islam, there's nothing like that. No other religion has justice like Islam has. So that is one thing I would like you to appeal to justice of Islam in the Quran. It says you it, it, do not let be unjust. Even let not your uh, enmity comes in between you and and justice. Even with enemies, you need to be just, which I don't find in the Bible at all. Many times. And I and I uh, and I invite you. Allah to says that he's justice. the one who puts enmity between the Christians and causes hatred. How's that just? Because they broke the covenant. Because so he's he's just in putting enmity and causing hatred amongst the people, right? Because because they were wrong ones in the in the, to begin with. So don't they, talk to me they, about justice and, and and bringing an enmity when your God is the one who produces the enmity no, between people. They, 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 no are not sense, in, they are not innocent people. They are the people who who all follow Satan. They already broke the covenant of God. So the God right. put wrath on them. And your right. God says, if anybody born out of a um, wedlock, uh, God will, they will not enter the assembly of the Lord for 10 generations. Why are you uh, punishing a bastard? Uh, it's, all right. it's not so, a fault of a bastard. I want to move on to the other callers. You said you wanted to say one thing. You said you're one no thing. Worries. No, uh, no, I'm just saying said, the justice of Islam. I, I just want to. I just want to add one thing here. You said that there's nothing in the Bible about being just with your enemies. Uh, pretty <laughs> sure it was Jesus who said to love your enemies, to treat your enemies as well as you would treat yourself. No, no, uh, I didn't say sure that. that you I can't says, be unjust into that. No, I didn't say that. I said justice like in Islam. There's no other scripture have justice like Islam. I didn't well, say the Bible I, didn't I think say we would. I, I think we'd agree, Avery. Right? We agree that the justice in Islam is quite unlike <laughs> any other kind of justice. <laughs> yes, well, I agree. Same Jesus says. Same Jesus says, "Hate your mother and hate your father." Luke fourteen no. twenty six. Uh, uh, so Abbas, we're, we're not going to. We're not going to open a new love topic. Your enemy, but hate your mother and father. Uh, well, you said it. I will see you, you in a couple of weeks, Abbas, if not before then. Definitely, since we've no scheduled worries. time to give Any our time. arguments about. So uh, uh, Abbas knows what I talk about, but no one else does. Uh, Abbas and I have agreed to discuss which of the two scriptures comes from God and give our reasons for that. Uh, yes. I believe we're going to do that on March 5th or 5th. 4th. March 5th is Sunday, 5th. isn't it? 5th, God yes. Uh, so maybe we'll get to talk to Abbas before then, but if not, uh, thank you for coming on today. I do have two other callers, so I want to Give some time to someone else. Thank you, guys. God bless. Take care. You too. All right. So we have uh, Anam and we have Altami Warid. So uh, before we take any specifics, can you just, uh, why don't you go first, Anam? Just say who you are. Uh, sure. Um, well, I'm just a humble person. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in political science and religion. Uh, I live in New York. And um, actually, uh, I may as well say this now, to be honest with you, you guys are doing a great job, by the way. Um, you uh, put on the heat, you know, especially God Logic really knows how <laughs> to turn up the, uh, the, the, the range. Um, <laughs> so I'm intimidated a little bit. Let me say that also. But uh, I also want to kind of put this out there before you guys engage with me um, and before the chat. So I, uh, I'm a friend of Rob's, by the way, Rob from Central Apologetics. I think he was on your show a week or two ago, that is. Mm -hmm. Yes. So nice to meet you. Uh, uh, that's how I came across your podcast. Um, and so I am actually a Trinitarian Muslim. So um, that's going to, you know, be, uh, I don't, I've never met another one. So I'm not saying yeah, there's that, more. <laughs> that, that's very interesting. I definitely am interested in what you have to say, but I, I want to uh, see yeah. who our other caller is first as well. So, Altami, are you there? Us. Yes, sir. Ah, it's good old ultimate truth, is it not? I miss you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my name in I doubt. You've, you've, uh, you've had some experience with ultimate truth, Avery? He uh, literally cannot get enough of me. He's followed me on Clubhouse. He's... He's everywhere now, you know, everywhere where I am. <laughs> at least we, at least we agreed upon that the Injil and the Torah are not corrupted. At least, right? At least. Okay, so it's a, it's a start. 
<laughs> all right so i i know you were actually here first ultimate but since i've talked to you several times and uh i've never talked to anon before i want to give him the first opportunity all right i'll, I'll meet me up uh nice to meet both all three of you uh so maybe just bouncing off what you guys just uh were discussing with him um i came in right when you showed him the verse which says um a lot of things but it also says the uh, the verse of the Quran that says that the Christian and Jewish scriptures are valid and legit. Um, so that was a good job um, because he had to, I thought his answer was pretty, I mean, you know, uh, people have different opinions, but I thought like he, he couldn't see what the verse was actually saying. And, you know, when you study Christianity, you kind of understand like the Protestant tradition is very much about literally what the text says. So it's a very, it's an asset, you know, to, to just go into the text. And unfortunately, you know, I feel like if you revere a text, you should like penetrate the text, like each and every word and just take it for what it is without adding extra, you know? And again, like the, the people who do this the most are, are Protestant Christians. Um, so unfortunately he didn't have that, you know, he, he said, you know, well, if, if what your interpretation is true, you know, uh, the reason for the prophet Muhammad uh, coming was um, there was no point. And it's like, well, you know, he didn't, He did, again, you know, he had to add his own exegesis, but he couldn't take the text for literally what it was. So, yeah, um, yeah I actually feel like that's that's actually a good, you know, um, when you debate someone, you should do it on, on their own terms, you know. So I feel I once had a debate um, uh, in a, in a Christian server with a, with a Muslim, and it's like, you know, find me the verse that says that their texts are invalid. And it's like, if anything, it criticizes the way, you know, the Christians and Jews at the time interpreted the texts. But it mm -hmm. never says that the texts are wrong, right? In fact, it says the opposite. It says that the text you're reading right now is valid because the prior texts were valid. So that's that's yeah. the Quranic argument. And so somehow, you know, as a Muslim, you know, it, it kind of took me a while for this to dawn on me. But yeah. It's like your own text actually, like the argument we make, you know, like I'm, I'm, I was 14 years old and I used to uh, debate Christians about the Bible, but like, you know, most, obviously most, um, you know, other students are not well-read or, you know, they're not well-researched. So um, I really thought I was like the, the king of refuting, you know, the Trinity and Christianity because I knew <laughs> so many New Testament verses of like the back of my hand. But um, sorry, I forgot where I was going with that. But uh, the thing is that, I mean, I may as well just point out that um, ironically then I had, uh, when I was 22, I had a religious experience where I believe um, I encountered the Logos and I kind of, so I understood the Trinity in a tr in an intuitive way. And so uh, I'm not exactly Christian, but I do like toe the line a little bit. So uh, I do, so I feel like that's a good argument for Christians to start with is that uh you know on their own terms uh the, the the quran itself does not ever say that jews and christians their books are no good or reputed or illegitimate or corrupted so i mean there are like two verses they like they try to counter with one one is that um you know like they read what's not in there even though they know the scriptures better than their sons and I'm like, you know, that's a really big compliment to say somebody knows a book better than his or her own child. Like, so it's it's admiring you guys for, um, you know, knowing scripture so well. So again, mm -hmm. that doesn't say your books are invalid, your book was corrupted, your books cannot be relied upon. You know, um, it says they know the books, but, but the book better than their own sons. And that's a compliment, actually. Uh, like so um what there was another verse so it says they they added to the pages and so you know that in itself first of all pages just means um you know, scriptures means pages like scripture is a script means writings so scripture just literally just means writings so the word for um hey so uh the word for uh, uh pages you know or the the scriptures is just pages so you could have had for example uh, somebody pointed out to me um you know how there there are books like uh codex sinaiticus it has i think something like part of the Didache or you know shepherd of hermits or something 
And so like, you know, the idea of a, of a book, you know, first of all, a book is a strange like modern concept. So the idea of a book that's just going to have 27 books or 66 books, you know, it's kind of a modern concept, you know, you, you may have helped, like, uh, so they, you use a book as a, a lectionary, as a guide to liturgy or prayer. So that's why you have a book. It's not to say this is the authoritative book and we're going to uh, exalt this book above all others. So um, anyway, so like to say the, the, the fact that the Quran says that uh, certain, you know, monks or someone have, may have added, have added to their pages. It doesn't, it doesn't say that the, that you people have lost your uh, books and it's all been corrupted and none of it's valid. So um, right. good job. So I have a, a couple questions for you along mm -hmm. the same line, just to kind of figure out sure. where you stand. Uh, Mary asked, does the Quran deny the Trinity? And uh -oh. Aubin said, uh, can you please explain what you mean by Trinity? What, yeah. what, what is your position, right? Great I mean, question. to say Great that question. you're Trinitarian Muslim, it sounds question. very strange to us. So we're, we're trying to figure out where you stand, I think. Yeah, actually, they're both very valid questions because they actually, um, they, they're they actually the two most important questions. So I'll tackle the second one first. Uh, first is the Trinity, and this is the hypostatic union, um, as defined uh, that way. And I think that's the briefest answer I can give, but because um, there's so much to, you know, I'm still, so I'm actually still studying Nicaea, and then hopefully yeah, I'll yeah, get to like yeah. Constantinople, the council itself. So, so uh, the, just, just, uh, I'll you know, you real, real quick, yeah, yeah. the hypostatic yeah. union refers to the two natures of Jesus. It's not a doctrine related to the Trinity. Um, oh, I'm, but, but, no, 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 uh, but there's a hypo, there's no, I'm sorry. There's a, a sorry to cut, cut you off. Uh, and this is bold, of me, and, but the, there's a hype, there's a hypostasis between the three persons of the Holy Trinity. Right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Substance, so when so. we say, when we say three persons, uh, it, that's a translation of three hypostases. So, uh, uh, what you're trying and to say there, is there's an equality more, between them also like there's a non-differentiation right. more or less you, you would say support the orthodox position on at nicaea yeah yeah i'm a nicaea or, or the, the yeah you could say that with you guys in nicaea here nicaea is great yeah so you you affirm you affirm the father and, uh, and, and the son and, and the holy spirit yeah yeah are, um, oh, so so that that leads right to the second question does the quran deny the trinity um, again, very, very like uh, difficult question for me to approach. There are okay, so sh short answer is no. I don't think so. Um, I think it indicates, yeah, I think it indicates that there is a trinitarian component to the early Muslims, and so therefore, as you were noticing, you know, the closest to you would be Christians, and certainly the they praise the monks, right? So it says. Um, the monks, so actually the, the, the exact verse that talks about the people who will be closest to you, it refers to the monks, and you will find them to be closest to you. So monks were hermits, and they were people of learning. And so, you know, they had time, right? They didn't have their kids, so they had. So um, it praises the monastic. And so it's really funny. So in, in the history of the early church, you know, it's kind of forgotten today, but it kind of lives on in the celibate priesthood of Catholicism. And orthodoxy um but the monks they were essential in like centuries third fourth fifth centuries in spreading promoting preserving transmitting christianity and like it was a full half of the church like people just decided to okay i'm going to give up everything and just go live in the desert and meditate on christ all day or you know the the, the dual nature or the hypostases of the three persons or whatever whatever they you know like they were just retreat like from the uh, material world and I, I mean that's me exaggerating saying it was half of christianity but i'm just like i like the, in the philip shafts i think books or the other one which is like nine volumes um it talks about like basically the, you need a whole chapter on on the monastic tradition within early christianity um so quran says those people are good and uh those i believe you know, it survives even in the Hadith literature that the, the Orthodox monks, well, they're not Orthodox because there wasn't a schism. Um, the the Eastern monks uh, were very pious and holy people. 
a hero. So I think you can read the Quran, and and so it, there is a verse, you know, for example, that says like, "Say not three, you know, uh, father, son, and mother." But I feel like that's really not the Trinity, so that wouldn't be a condemnation of the Trinity. But um, so now it's three on one row. <laughs> nice I to see. Agree. You. Yeah. I agree with that. That the Quran and, the, and those verses doesn't doesn't deny the Trinity. It's denying something else. Like it's denying polytheism, not the Trinity. Uh, but would you would you say in line of this that the Quran thinks that it's addressing the Trinity, but actually just doesn't just gets it wrong? You know, <clears throat> when trying to address that that concept. I would like to, yeah, that's what, I mean, James White is a very um, polite person, you know, so he'll always, <laughs> take a high road. he'll always take a high road. So, like, he does take that, like, as a high road argument. Um, Hello, testing. Hey. hey. Oh, now. Hey. Uh, sorry, you were muted. Anam, my good friend. Nice to see you. It's good to see you, man. It's three on one. You guys will love Anam. He's really awesome. <laughs> So far, but actually, I mean, Thaddeus is really. I've, I'm learning. Thaddeus has uh, uh, he's sharp. He has sharp daggers in his hands. You know, uh, <laughs> when it comes to Islamic apologetics. I mean, uh, well, so people I'm, think I'm, I'm, uh, people think that because I'm soft spoken, I'm I'm weak and that they can manipulate me. But that might not be true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, I'll just I'll just restart my yeah, computer. For some reason, this is all laggy. It's one sec. Um, I do think, though, I mean, so I don't think I could win a debate on this topic. That's why, I mean, at first I don't do debates, so I'm just coming here, like, you know. Yeah, we're just conference. chilling. We're just talking. Yeah, yeah, and that's why, I mean, I think, um, you know, that's why I started with your strengths first, you know. I mean, but I'm, I'm actually, I actually am here to defend Islam. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, I think, uh, here's the thing. I mean, and you know, I mean, because I'm I'm so close with my Christian friends on on Discord for the past like two years, so it's something like I'm almost I understand I'm moving away from what I was born into and moving towards something that I was not born into. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a bridge to cross, and I haven't crossed that bridge. Uh, and I think I think it's baptism. You know, I haven't I haven't done that. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but the th yeah, so the thing is, though, so to, to, to put a cap on the question, uh, does the Quran deny the Trinity? I think I might even lose a debate. So historically, I, like, I like I like to talk about history. You know, if you notice, I was, when I was talking about the monastic history of Christianity, um, I think at some point, you know, the, the, the Islamic uh, uh, history took a turn, and we had to differentiate from the Christians on one issue, and this became the issue, right? Because obviously Islam is the most anti-Trinitarian religion on earth, and it is dogmatically anti-Trinitarian. So um, that's a problem for me. That is like a huge problem for me because, uh, um, you know, like I often say, like uh, on th theologically, you know, I'm like my, I'm standing on two horses, you know, like one. And so I understand. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. I don't like, I don't, you know, like, and I, I would also put a caveat, like, I don't have a, a website or, or a blog where I say, tell people to like, follow me, or like, my way is, is the truth, you know, I don't claim to, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to um, become famous or anything, you know, I'd, I'd rather, like, I'd rather just, you know, faith is a deeply internal and private thing. And I think like, one thing I'll say, you know, because actually, this is actually a Christian Apologize. I think one say that that brings me the closest to Christianity. First of all, you know, generally speaking, Christians are much kinder than Muslims when it comes to dogmatic <laughs> um, statements. Um, so so no. they, it, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, we don't have to dispute about the the Trinity. We, I, the question was actually just out of curiosity uh, whether you agreed that the Quran doesn't deny the Trinity. Uh, G said, this guy is so honest. I love it. And uh, as you can see, we're just having a friendly chat here. Uh, Avery and I will give back what we get. So, you know, we have a friendly chat. We have a friendly chat. Like you said, you don't want to debate. Well, I don't want to debate either. I actually think organized debate is far from the best means uh, of 
talking through these issues because there's no real chance to respond to one another. Uh, so, uh, of course, the core doctrine of, of Christianity is that Jesus died for the forgiveness of sins. And I'm guessing that you would disagree with. And that's why you wouldn't call yourself a Christian. You know, so that took me... Here's the thing, though. So once once you go from, you know, be, uh, let's say, let's say, let's say this, there's two core doctrines, right? One would be the Holy Trinity, and then the other would be the you know, crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so um, let me, let me say that, that there's at least two pillars, you know, and just say, because I feel like one is just as strong as the other, you know, like the Marcion heresy and certain things were expunged much much more early on you know even before anyway so um i'm not so and then the other thing is though i actually don't dispute that like dispute it in the sense that so i was humbled when i um realized that my conception of god was you know wrong and the people who i thought were you know unnecessarily complicating the the omnipotence of god were you know, actually, they had the right concept, you know. And also, I was the last person on earth to come to that realization because, you know, I actually knew all the verses, you know, that actually, you know, may have showed some kind of subordination of Christ, you know, to um, God the Father. <clears throat> so um, that same epistemic humility, I'm going to steal a phrase from someone. Yeah, it comes from, makes me... Um, realize that look i could be wrong about the crucifixion and and you know the uh atonement theology that uh you guys have you're watching it sideways yeah you're sideways <laughs> oh no nah. what the heck i'm just sideways bro no what's good bro i only got like five minutes to talk you know i'm gonna work right now i'm about to go back from lunch and stuff like that but um i think you like dropped the thing inside the chat so we could speak and uh, uh yeah just uh I, I haven't met everybody else here i only met thaddeus but uh, what's your name, bro? Uh, God Logic. What's up, bro? I'm, I'm Avery. Yeah, you said Avery. Yeah. Nice to meet you, bro. And then what's the other one? Nice your name is you. Anam? Uh, Anam? Yeah. Yeah, Hunter, bro. Nice to meet you, bro. Uh, you too. Yeah, what's the, what's the topic? Like, because you guys put like the little joint thing in the bottom. It's just like something about theology. I know me and, um, me and Thaddeus were scheduled to speak on like Sunday uh, oh, concerning like the Trinity and stuff like that. But like, um, <clears throat> Like, is it, is it open for me to just ask you guys a question? I just had a quick question before I got back to work. Yeah, please like do. That. Please do. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask Thaddeus, because I know Thaddeus and Avery, you guys are, like, well read up on, like, the Christian doctrine, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I was kind of wondering, like, like, what brings you guys, like, like solidity, like, in your faith? Like, for me, for me, like, personally, I'll just put mine forth. But I had, like, subjective experiences. Uh, and then I came home from, like, the where I was at, and then I started looking into it, et cetera, et cetera. What, what brings you guys solidity, like, in your faith? Go ahead, Daddy. Uh, you want to go first, Avery? Nope. Okay, I guess I am going first. All right, so. <laughs> oh, oh, did you say no? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was, I was <laughs> like, what the hell? I awkward silence. Yeah, yeah, so he only has uh, five, he only has a short time, so. Um, yeah, to, just to, to make it quick so that you can also hear it, that is, is, so I, I said this earlier um, in the stream before everybody, like, started coming on and stuff, yeah. that number one is prophecy for me. Yeah. Um, the old how the Old Testament prophesies what Jesus will do and how he fulfills all of these prophecies to the T, mm. you know, you know, 700 years and a thousand years before he was born. Yeah. That stuff for me is like a telltale sign that God is real and he actually spoke in our reality and okay. spoke that this is his truth mm. to, to, baggy, to piggyback off that. The historicity of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that mm. the evidence that follows that is what seals the deal for me. Yeah. So the prophecy and the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, those two uh, are what like I stand on when it comes to yeah. like, yeah, Christian. Yeah. True, no so I, I can imagine like looking at it from like your perspective, like Islam yeah. just sounds like a bunch of baloney because it literally goes against like Jesus Christ being God and also his crucifixion as well. I mean, I'd yeah. say if that's if that's the things that bring you solidity in, in your faith to like let you know that it's the absolute truth, and then there's something a whole another faith that goes like completely opposite against it. I'd imagine like you'd be like looking like what the hell? Uh, anyway, what, yeah. what about you, Thaddeus? Yeah. So my uh, favorite argument for Christianity is the historical argument that 
the facts of history are best explained by mm. Jesus rising from the dead. Mm. And if he predicted his own death and resurrection and then he fulfilled it, seems like a pretty good guy to trust to me. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would, you know, and obviously if I was like giving the argument, I'd expand upon that. But just to answer the question, uh, that would be the argument that I'd go to first. And then the other thing that I would point to is kind of how the, well, Jesus declares in the, the Gospels that the entire Bible is about him. Mm -hmm. And when you first hear that, it, it kind of seems absurd. You're like, what do you mean the entire Bible is about Jesus? It's about people who lived thousands of years, up to thousands of years before him. Yeah. But when you look at the story, there's a cohesive story. There's uh, what we call types and shadows uh, yeah. of things. So you have an imperfect fulfillment of a, a prophecy and that seems to be the you know that seems to be it right like yeah. there was a prophecy it was fulfilled yay uh, but then that prophecy ultimately is fulfilled again in the person of jesus uh so stuff like that those would be my two things well would you i know you guys don't hold your scripture like to the in the same sense that the muslims do like you know we of course we would have to stand behind the argument of like perfect preservation and stuff like that but like christians like i know you guys don't hold that that same exact stance am i wrong is that true we don't yeah we don't hold it in the sense that muslims do like muslims say that the 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 quran is literally allah's words that he yeah. spoke and every single word every dot every tittle is the same exact way it's been the same never changed no variations right what okay. christians hold to when we talk about preservation is that the meaning <clears throat> and the message has been preserved and has been unchanged and there's no contradictions no changes or corruptions in the meaning and the message of what was been handed down traditionally and you know the message of jesus and stuff like that so yeah. we have uh, in our manuscripts like textual variants for example but none of okay. these textual variants change the doctrine or change the meaning of of the, the you know what we believe and what's being preached yeah of course i was gonna ask in terms of like revelation like you know of course the muslim claim is that allah like the god spoke to the angel gave the holy spirit who came to the Prophet Muhammad Islam and he spoke and the companions wrote it. So in terms of like uh, all the writers who, who like attributed or contributed to the the Bible, like how would the, how is it inspiration? Like is it how is it believed to have come? Yeah, so when it comes to the Bible, you had it's written by people who are prophets. Okay. Right? People who are prophets who had direct revelation from God and people who um were uh, apostles who also yes. were had that, you know were guided by the holy spirit to write what they wrote even from even god being so sovereign that he allowed them to write from their perspective and guiding that process in how they wrote and conveyed the message they conveyed the message accurately while also doing it from their perspective what they experienced and so yeah. uh it's it's in, it's uh that's what is inspired like all that scripture it's it's god inspired it's god breathed and he guided that process you know so yeah. um you you have you have some some examples like for example daniel daniel when he received his revelations he received visions and dreams and an mm -hmm. angel came and interpreted um those dreams and visions that he was having for him because he was confused he didn't know about it um so he had an angel come to him um even though he was getting visions and revelation while other prophets, some of them spoke to God direct. Most of them spoke to God directly. Not even, mm. there was no angel involved, you know? So, so I don't know, it'll pose a question like for me. So like, if it is, if it is like revelation coming down from like multiple different people at like different time periods, like uh, let's just say for the Quran, for example. So like when we look at the Quran, we know like the, it was written in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad. And then a year and a half like after like the battle of your mama or whatever, <laughs> Yo, mama. Anyways, it was it was compiled into like a a book, like a book form, right? And then uh, standardized in the, in the year six fifty two, et cetera, et cetera. Made copies and they sent it out. But in terms of like the Bible, like uh, did they pass around like some sort of like book, and then they like all wrote on the same book, or like how did it get around? Like was it by ear? Like what was it? It was by ear for the longest. It was by ear for the longest, and then they begin to write. They begin to write down. Uh, the New Testament per se, because you're not talking about the Old Testament, you're talking about the New Testament. So yeah, yeah. let's talk about the, the gospel, right? So, because they already had, they already had the Old Testament, they had the Torah, they had the whole, the the the, the Tanakh, they had it all. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's what that was part of their tradition. Now, coming to the New Testament, they preached it for many years, many, many okay. years. They preached it, they proclaimed it, they recited it over and over. 
until they begin to start writing it. And they were spread out, the disciples and the apostles, they were spread out um, in different cities, different countries. Yeah. Uh, but they were different provinces, but they still wrote and sent out their writings um, to many people, to yeah. different cities and stuff like that. To where somebody may have Luke, Luke's writing, while another church may have, let's say, uh, 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 Mark's writing. And yeah. once they once they are introduced to, the, oh, you have that too, they'll they'll accept it and add it on. And so it was it was getting spread like that, copied, spread out, copied, spread out. There was no one control of like um, of the scriptures like you yep. like in Islam, you have a, a control center like uh, Abu, uh, Abu Bakr and then they uh, they controlled, you know, how the text was given out and, and and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't like that with the when it came to the gospel. Yeah. So like in terms of like how like because I know the and correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Because uh, I don't like to speak objectively about about things that I'm not absolutely 100 percent sure about. So I'll just ask if you correct me if I'm wrong. But like the oldest manuscripts, like for, for like for the Bible, like it's the ones that that is translated from today. It's like in Greek, and then it's like from the year like 300. Is that true? I'm not sure. Are you talking about New uh, Testament? Yeah, so I, I can answer. I can yeah. answer your question there. Uh, so it, it's going to depend on what you actually mean by. Uh, manuscript. So if you if a fragment it counts, then yeah. we have fragments from the second century. Yeah. Uh, if you're talking about first complete text, then it's going to be the fourth century. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, which is actually fairly similar to the Quran. That the, the earliest fragments of the Quran are very early, but the the earliest complete one is is much later. And this is what would you would expect because written on pieces of paper hundreds yeah. thousands of years ago yeah. paper decays you, you're not going to find a lot of materials being left behind yeah I, 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 four percent of people were illiterate yeah 100. I, I was saying well first thing like in terms of like quranic manuscripts like for like the full quran i say 99 percent i was missing like the first like 23 verses or something like that that'd be like the top copy manuscript uh, and it's like comes within like a hundred or two hundred twenty five. Yeah, years yeah. Well, like I mean, ninety nine percent isn't a hundred percent. Yeah, so. 100%, yeah. No, <laughs> but it, I, I mean, it, it, as far as like you know, textual criticism purposes, I the text of the Quran is is solid, but the text of the Bible is solid as well. So when yeah, someone like tells me like that it has to be a complete manuscript, well, then I'm going to actually insist on complete, and ninety nine percent isn't complete. Uh, yeah, hundred. Yeah, hundred. No, what, what you're saying is true. I wanted to say though. Uh, in terms of like, because like you said, Avery, right? Your name's Avery. Yeah. You said like it was passed down like by ear, so like ear to ear to person to person, uh, until it came to like uh uh well, what we have like which is the earliest complete because that's like where it's copied from like how you have the Bible what you have today it's translated from those manuscripts. So was it ear to ear and then written down uh like on on whatever was written down on uh with the with those codexes is that is that uh, is that truth like was it written like that most likely the text was written down first what do you mean uh, so like the the letters obviously were written down first they okay. were obviously written down and then then uh you know they were sent as a letter one copy and then they preserved it made copies of it and so forth uh the gospels also uh are written documents Right. Mm. That, that's not to say that nothing in them was passed on orally before the Gospels were written, but they were never recited in like, you know, the Quranic type fashion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were always in written documents from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, now, like things like, say, the sayings of Jesus, which are found in the Gospels, those were probably passed on orally for, you know, five, ten years, whatever amount of time before. Yeah. The, the Gospels started to be compiled. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the text itself, it was definitely a written work. Like, because the only reason I ask these questions is because, like, these might be necessary requirements that I'm setting for myself. So I don't want to state them as truth. Like, this is like a criteria that everybody of faith needs to follow or something like that. But I'd say me, like, not to boast or to be boastful or anything, but I consider myself, like, kind of like a critical thinker. Not, like, super. Like, I don't, I'm not, like, some genius or something, some Einstein. But kind of like a critical thinker. And I'd say like one of the necessary requirements like for a book like to be from God, like, you know, from atheist perspective or something like that for a person with no faith, they might be like, damn, this might be the only life I'm able to experience. You feel me? So if I'm going to bet like my whole soul, like on some sort of scripture, some sort of book or following some prophet, like I'd say like if it's going to be some tangible source, I'd say 
Like it have to be like, un like unchanged, in a sense. Just because like, like okay, let's say for right. example. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll, so I'll, 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 so yeah. let me respond to that. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. But, and and I would agree that you it has to be unchanged. But what has to be unchanged? The literal letters or the message? Because which saves you? Are the words magic, or is the message conveyed by the words? What matters? Yeah, and, exactly. if, and if you're talking about the message, then there's no doubt that the biblical text is the same as when it was first written. There are, yeah. you know, isolated words here and there. And we're really actually just talking about isolated words where there's some doubt about whether this is an original word mm -hmm. or, it, uh, you know, since sometimes you can flip one letter and change the word, yeah. it could be one of two different words, stuff yeah. like that. But none of the doctrines of the church are dependent on textual variants. Yeah, but I would I would ask the question though, like um, because you guys are followers of Jesus Christ, um, so like, if if the if the Bible is a uh, I don't want to use the word manifestation, but more like uh, an amalgamation of of uh, different like revelations were given to the different people from the same exact God, uh, and they're all attributed to Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ preached and his message, etc. Like if the Bible itself, like the, the primary source itself. Uh, has has changes and and even I'd say like some copyist errors inside of it, et cetera. Like, how do you know like the main uh, central belief isn't changed itself? Like, how how could you know that like for certain? Because look, me personally, like I'm willing to submit to anything that's absolute truth. I always say this, like, yeah, I'm a big Muslim, yeah, big Muslim. I go around uh, speaking to other people and having interface discussion, et cetera. And I always say, if anyone bring uh, uh, something that's that's more solid than than Islam. Uh, in, in terms of like anything, I'll submit to it 100%. So it's not like I'm completely unwilling to accept anything else. But of course, these questions first would have to be answered before I could even consider submitting, to, yeah. like betting my whole soul on it. You feel me? So I was just asking, like, how do you know what Jesus Christ preached for sure if like the primary source that's attributed to Jesus Christ itself has errors or, or has been changed? Right. Uh, so that's a fair question. Uh, and the answer is going to be that. It, as far as history is concerned, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, even like secular history, this is as certain as, as it can be. You know, can you ever be 100 percent certain? I mean, I can't be 100 percent certain that the universe even existed 2000 years ago. So can mm -hmm. I be 100 percent certain these are the words that Jesus said? No. But uh, the Bible is far better documented than any other book in human history. Like we're more certain that the text is the, the original text than we are about anything else. And that includes the Quran. Now, I'm willing to be generous and say, if proper textual criticism was done on the Quran, it would probably come out looking similar to the Bible. But we don't actually know that because proper textual criticism hasn't really been done on the Quran. Uh, it's just been, it, it early Muslims, show the same pattern as early Christians where they're mm. talking about variants and trying to figure out what's correct. And then at some point it was swept under the rug and this myth of perfect preservation mm. was developed instead uh, that because of the polemical value of saying to Christians, you're uncertain of your text and we're certain of ours. I, I also think we, we misunderstood the concept of biblical inerrancy. Mm. So we thought inerrancy meant it's like the literal word of God. And so therefore we had to ascribe ascribe to that but like that's not what inerrancy means so no i think i think avery, i think avery i think Avery uh cleared that i think he made it pretty clear that you guys don't believe that the bible is like the literal speech of god in the same way that the muslims do right 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 rather, right, rather, but, rather, right yeah. but but in other words uh, it's what that he said there's a polemical value like when we say that our book is perfectly preserved it's uh it's a uh, you know like a, a winning card you know in a debate right but like we thought that they meant when they 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 came up with the term biblical inerrancy like it's, yeah. it's something that they believe in but we misunderstood inerrancy to mean like literal perfect from god well you're and saying it, like, you're saying like we and they are you muslim or christian i'm kind of confused no i'm muslim oh okay because you're saying we as in me and you uh yeah, yeah, yeah. misunderstanding them okay because you're yeah, saying yeah. we you know it's kind of like y'all three on the top of the be on the bottom Sorry, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like uh y'all talking to me type thing i was kind of confused <laughs> no but hey, but but did you have to go back to work i don't want to get you no, in trouble. Bro, no you're good i'm not i don't think i'll be okay. in, in trouble or anything we can give it like three more minutes but uh okay. but what's it called but uh that is you were saying that um could i ask you like if there is copyist errors 
And like, I don't know, it's like a gap between like the manuscripts and the time of Jesus Christ. I ask you, how can we know that the central beliefs aren't changed itself? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and your answer, and your answer, I was saying, and your answer to that was that, uh, well, we know for certain that uh, that it hasn't been changed. In the same way, I haven't seen my my great 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 grandfather, but I know that he exists because I exist. But I'd say that's right. that's more necessary. That's more necessary. For example, you said that universe existed uh, more than two thousand years ago, but that's more necessary. But like, I would say it's not completely one hundred percent necessary that like the the Bible I stated. Oh, okay, so so. Um, I, I can give you a longer answer uh, another time since you have to go back. Okay. A very brief answer is that because of the the amount and diversity of manuscripts we have from different okay. times, places, uh, and different languages even, because mm -hmm. of all these manuscripts, the possibility of someone inventing the story later on yeah. and, and then attributing it back it, reaches the level of impossibility or practical impossibility. There are so many um, details in the text that would be impossible it, for someone at a later date. There are thousands date of New Testament manuscripts. And then as you go on, there's even like tens of thousands of fragments. So the yeah. fact that they all line up virtually, like he said, you know, there were no Xerox machines back then. Yeah, of course, so of course. That's why he's just putting the caveat, you can't be sure. But we can be very sure because... You know, you can't have, uh, th you know, hundreds of copyists, you know, copying the same thing throughout the centuries, you know, if there were, if somebody was inserting different passages in between them. So they have a pretty good transmission history, actually. Yeah, of course, but you're speaking. Yeah, so let me put other... it this way. Yeah. Uh, history is done almost exclusively by documents. Okay. If we were to throw out the biblical text, we would have to throw out 100% of ancient history and most of modern history. So you said history is, is uh, generally like documented. So you said right. we would throw out the yeah. biblical text, we would have to throw out history as well. Because in, in, the, in the Bible, it's history of people, the stories of people. And like that. That right. Yeah. So if we're going to say that the, the Bible text, you know, is too late to, to consider accurate. Well, it's, it's earlier and better attested than any document in history. Uh, so yeah. If we're, throw, if we're being consistent, we have to say we can't know anything about history to be certain. And that was kind of my point. Like sometimes atheists will say, you know, you have to have absolute proof, uh, which is impossible in the sense that they mean. But it's it's no more impossible than me proving that uh, I went to work today. Um, you know, I could supply evidence after evidence, after evidence for it, but you could deny every piece of evidence. And that's to me, that's where Christianity stands, that there's abundant evidence for it. If someone really wants to deny everything, sure, they can deny everything. But yeah, if they're course. being consistent, they're going to have to deny everything else about history as well. And that's the relevant field for evaluating Yeah, yeah. This, say, uh, as the biblical claims anyway. Yeah, I'd say if I was like an atheist, like uh, picking at the religion and just trying to find holes so I can snatch people out of their faith, I'd say that's pretty, pretty disingenuous. But the only reason why I'd say any Muslim would have cognitive dissonance in terms of the relationships between Islam and Christianity is because, like, let's say, like, for a Muslim, okay, so he looks at his, his book and he says, okay, this book, uh, I don't know, it's it's been preserved well. Uh, inside of it, it has, like, what's to say, some evidence is pointing towards that it's from God. Okay, let's say that I have faith in the Prophet Muhammad that he's a messenger of God. Let's say he affirms these things. And then he would look to the Christian doctrine and then he would, like, he would have, like, kind of dissonance. So it's kind of like you have to choose between one of the two. And I, like, I don't right. know, I'd say like looking at like, I don't know, the Quran. let's just say, for example, okay, the Quran says that Jesus Christ uh, was, they tried to kill him or something like that and God saved him and then put like some sort of replacement on the cross for him not to die or not to, not to get killed. And then we look to the biblical story and then it's something like different. Now, of course, you guys have like eyewitness testimonies, et cetera, et cetera. But if a person like has a book that he believes that comes from God and then looks at a Christian doctrine and makes the comparison, you can imagine like some dissonance would. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you believe that, absolutely. Then, of course, you would have it. But the Christian could say the same thing. You know, I, I have a complete confidence that the book of Matthew is written by Matthew, the disciple of Jesus, someone who was there in the position to know uh, what had happened. So... Mm -hmm. All you're really doing is appealing to the authority of Muhammad when you say something like that, uh, mm. which I don't think will stand up to scrutiny the way the authority of the Bible will. And and what and what way though? Because like again, like our, our tangible sources. So for example, if anyone makes a claim about God or something's going to happen to a specific person after they die, 
we would go to the source and we look at the sources to see if it's truth or not. So if the sources that you use, like the Bible, the primary source, like does have like errors or something like that inside of it, like you said, but it doesn't change the central belief. But like, how would you know that the central belief hasn't changed? Like, how do you know uh, the things that said that are attributed to Jesus and these are things that he said are actually the right. things he said? That's, okay. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm confused about. Like, if I can get that question. Answered, okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, I said. think, um, so there are many Christians who would say that there is not a single word in the Bible that has been changed. That there is nothing uh, that's in error in any way whatsoever. Uh, it's just a position of, of faith, though. I mean, so my position, and, and I feel that my position is stronger because it's based on evidence, because I'm willing to look at the evidence and say the evidence makes this 99.9% .9 certain. I feel like that's a lot more certain from my perspective than saying, this is my book. I believe it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I if see, that makes sense. Yeah. I see that's a rational, a rational uh, stance to take, that you base your beliefs on evidence, not just belief. But I was asking, I, I mean, if, if you don't have, if you don't have like the answer, that's totally fine. I'm not trying to put you in a corner or anything. If anything, I could probably like go to, a, I don't know, my grandma's church or something like that. And uh, as the pastor up there as well, I just actually like one. I just really want to understand. So like, yeah, yeah, how, yeah. yeah. Like, how do how do you how do you as a Christian okay. know for sure so, that the so word in the Bible you... is what Jesus said? Right. Like for sure. So let me give you a, a faith answer then. So we believe that the Holy Spirit guided us to recognize what is part of the canon, what is part of the 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 text that is considered inspired and authoritative. Yeah. Uh, and because. God is guiding the process. We believe that it is without error. So that would be my faith answer, equivalent to what you're asking, I think. But but yeah, so but there wouldn't be like anything like, um, for example, like I, I don't want to sound shitty, bro. Really, I don't. I don't want to sound shitty. And again, I'm not trying to snatch people away from what they believe. If it brings in peace or some something like that. And of course, we have like a little saying that Allah guides your wills or whatever. But anyways, I don't want to sound shitty. But is there anything objective to support that outside of faith? Like for example. <laughs> Like, like, for example, like, <laughs> like for example, just, just for example, just one thing I want to like post. For example, you know, we have like a secondary source, which is like Hadith or something like that. Uh, right. So like, you know, there's inauthentic ones and there's ones that are authentic as well. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. I can have a bunch of inauthentic Hadith and I could just say like, you know, I believe that the Prophet Muhammad some said this. But do I have anything objective to support it as well? Like, it would be my question. Because again, like, I'd say like, again, not to be boastful. But I say, like, I'm slight, like a critical thinker. So if I'm going to submit myself to, like, the Bible and, and the narrative, the biblical narrative and st stuff like that, is there anything objective to support it outside of faith? Yeah, I, I would say that the, the evidence of history supports the conclusion of the church on the canon, that it was written by the people in the best position to know, written at the earliest date. And we can see this uh, similar to, you know, weak or fabricated Hadith, there mm -hmm. are fabricated scriptures that the church rejected and when you look at how the, the the church fathers discussed these things there wasn't really any debate everyone was in complete agreement that these are the scriptures and these things are not the scriptures yeah um and, and then we can look at using the the methods of what's called higher criticism uh, you know this is things like literary criticism source criticism yeah. All the to all the tools of the academic, and when we look at those tool, use those tools, and apply the methodology they've developed, we come to the same conclusion that the church came to, that yeah, the documents that we accept I, 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 as the canon. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, like, but because again, you're followers of Jesus, but like, what did Jesus say? Like, is there anything outside of faith that can, like, is there anything objective, like anything like sure. change of anything? Sure. Um, there, I'll give you another piece of evidence, okay. uh, this time internal. So if we look yeah. at the text of, say, Matthew, just okay. pick an arbitrary example, yeah. and we apply the, these tools, we can see that there's a strong indication that there's an Aramaic uh, background to the sayings of Jesus that isn't there for the text added by the narrator. Mm. which implies that he is using an Aramaic document or using Aramaic sayings that have been passed on orally. Mm. Um, so that's an objective piece. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
yeah, so that'd be an objective piece of evidence to back it up. And when I when I look at all these evidences, you know, yeah. there's not going to be one smoking gun, right? There's not going to be one thing that says this is impossible to deny, and that whatever would be for anything else as well. But when I look at okay. evidence after evidence after evidence after evidence, and they all point to the same thing, they all point to the church being correct, they all point to the authors of the text being honest, they all point to Jesus actually saying these things. And then additionally, I have the alternate confirmation that the historical facts that no one de can deny, uh, such as the rise of Christianity, the okay. fact that Christians uh, started to believe in a crucified individual as their uh, God and savior, you know, okay. things that no one can deny. The only explanation that fits all of those things simultaneously is that Jesus rose from the dead. They was crucified and then he rose from the dead. Yeah, because yeah. each of the you can come up with an explanation for each piece of evidence individually, but you're going to come up with a different explanation for each one. So then you have you know ten explanations, a hundred explanations, a thousand different explanations for a thousand different pieces of evidence, and you on, then on the other side you have one explanation that fits all the evidence, and this is how all of history is done, and, and this is if, if we don't come to it, with the presupposition that God isn't real and miracles can't happen, then that's the only conclusion we can come to, I believe. Yeah, so you're saying that like the church, there's a, like a lot of uh, uh, figures who, uh, who all had like the same idea that, that Jesus Christ uh, came to, to rid the world of, of their sins, like as a sacrificial lamb. And that's like well, the no, I, I was actually speaking of the text. Like they agree on the same text. They also oh, agree you're saying, on the oh, I thought you meant, I thought you meant they're But, the but they doctrine. agree on which text is inspired. Because uh, you were asking me specifically about the text, so that's what I was getting at there. I wasn't getting at doctrine. Oh, okay, okay. Mm, I don't know. I know we have a, uh, another talk scheduled in a few days. I mean, I... I oh, man, bro, I just don't want to sound like an asshole, bro. Can I swear here? Is it bad? Can I not swear? I mean, um transgressing that limits i'm tripping i'm tripping <laughs> my fault my fault. My fault. My fault. no what's it called uh it's just like i mean i don't know why it's not been in my brain because you said that uh you have like aramaic like i know even in like old manuscripts there's like some aramaic or mix of aramaic uh things i know it's like the language of jesus christ but again like you wouldn't have the you wouldn't have the like original manuscripts in the aramaic as well and again, like, uh, well, yeah, they're written in Greek. They weren't yeah, written in Aramaic yeah, again, first. And, and that was years later. So it's like ear to ear to ear to ear to ear. Like the same thing, like a game of telephone. How do you know, like, it hasn't been changed though? Like, that's just the only problem I have with it. But again, we're going to, we might go back and forth for hours. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, for, for the benefit of the audience, since they don't actually know, uh, I, I'm scheduled to talk uh, on the subject of the Trinity on Sunday. Yeah. So, God willing. We'll be back God. then, and maybe we'll get into scripture after that. But, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to expound on these things in far more detail. I was trying to give you short answers because I knew yeah. the time was. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I can supply evidence behind what I'm saying. I was just trying okay, to give yeah. you the overarching reason. Okay, for sure. Um, but, yeah, bro, it's been, it's been cool talking with you guys. I always, I mean, bro, I don't have any, like, I don't have any, like, like, oh, my God, it's loud. One second. But I don't have any Christians to talk to. No one wants to talk to me, bro. My friends, they don't. Oh, I'll like, talk to you. Yeah, you know, uh, I'll no talk to you. Don't worry. And I bet you, you, I bet you, man. yeah, yeah, yeah bro, I bet you, yeah. you uh, subscribe to God Logic's channel and jump in one of his streams. He'll talk to you too. Okay, yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, so it's cool to have like Christian people to talk to and stuff like that. But yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, I'll be back Sunday. Uh, God willing, we can speak on uh, like the Trinity and like the determinist argument and stuff like that and finish our conversation. But no, it's been good speaking to you guys. All right, take care, bro. All right, yeah, Alrighty. Right, Thank you for joining us. It yeah, was no a pleasure. Yeah. So I, I have several super chats that have come in over some time that I, that I want to read and acknowledge uh, everyone for their donations. Some of these are, are rather old, <laughs> so uh, forgive me for not getting them to, to them sooner. Any Odessa, thanks for giving a boss a free logic lesson. Only a few more classes and he'll be a Christian. Well, if he starts <laughs> listening, <laughs> Sure. <laughs> maybe. Let's, let's maybe yeah. <laughs> uh, donation from J Mac with no comment. Thank you very much for the donation there. Uh, this was in reference to Abbas as well. He just put a ton of words in Allah's mouth. Allah didn't say among them in Surah 
98.6, for example. So thank you for those donations, Paul. I think that that is definitely a good summary of a boss's time on here, that he kept telling us what a law really meant, um, indicating that you know he knows better than the, the word for word reading of the Quran. Mm -hmm. few more super chats here still um, from time is fleeting Anam is a free thinker I like free thinkers I use that in a neutral sense of the term not the popular anti-supernatural one uh, I thought the JW in his name stood for Jehovah's Witnesses clarify uh, I don't know what that's in reference to Anam do you know what he means no no I think he's confusing you with someone else probably uh, if you don't know what that's about. I thought maybe your screen name and YouTube was different. Donation from Jarvis with no comment. Thank you very much for the donation. And then uh, from Jarvis as well, show him as textual variant, how they don't change the message. Um, yeah, most of those about, textual variants are like uh, Jesus and his disciples went to town and the variant says they went to town. You know, like they, they used yeah. to summarize stuff back then because you know copyists so it was really hard work actually yep the the most common textual variants are spelling variants on names and places which obviously don't change meaning at all and change of word order which in greek doesn't change meaning at all because uh, greek is not a syntax based language the way english is uh, that accounts for you know you might hear figures of you know a hundred thousand variations or whatever but that's going to account for 99 percent of them and then of the remaining one percent or i don't quote me on the 99 but vast vast majority and then of the remaining almost all of them are cases where you know you have 500 manuscripts that have one word and you have one that says something different well you know that the 500 are, are correct there's only like between 50 and 100 words that are there's any real dispute over which is correct and none of those uh materially change the, the meaning in any or so I mean really so, change it at all. So ironically the variants prove the solidity of the textual transmission. Yeah, that's correct. By having all those manuscripts, seeing all the the variants and th this is kind of what I was trying to get at them with them. When you you know you have this and this and this and this and this and they agree on 99% and what they disagree on isn't the same 1% then you you know what the original and text like was. you said it's a spelling error or something you know like which we all make right like a typo yep and of course sometimes you can write the wrong letter and it can ch actually change the word so it doesn't it sometimes technically changes meaning but it's pretty almost always it's easy to figure out which was the original wording and then finally one last super chat here from wolf and haas why do you keep saying the church assembled scripture and maintained it but I'm fairly certain no one in the panel is part of an apostolic church. So when I use the term church, I mean the body of all believers. I I don't mean the Roman Catholic Church. I don't mean the Lutheran Church. I don't mean the Greek Orthodox Church. When I use the term church, I mean the body of believers. So when I say that the church decided upon the scriptures, I mean that as community of believers, we looked at the texts that were available. We, we looked at, and this is somewhat um, deceptive by, by acting like there's kind of, you know, a decision being made because really the, we had the text and then people tried to add to it with other things. Um, and, and so you have, what you have really is you have well-informed individuals in a position of authority uh, who are, you know, highly literate and, and well-educated and whatnot, looking at these things, logicking it out, thinking about it, and the conclusions they come to are the same conclusions that we would reach if we tried to do it today and we applied the, the tools of critical scholarship. So that's what I mean. Uh, hopefully that clarifies. Yeah, and I, I, I love um, St. Paul. He writes to the Church of the Saints at Ephesus. So when you like look at the literal language, right? So it's like you're saying the body of believers, but he's writing to the community of saints. He's not writing to even a, a church or a building. It's the same concept you're getting. And uh, Drawzam says, without the Catholic Church, we wouldn't have a Bible. I'm going to say that's technically true, but that's only because Catholic Church meant universal church. Every Christian was a member of the 
Catholic Church before the first schism. Uh, so technically that's true, but it, it's totally misplacing the authority, right? The, it, there was no pope that decided, or, or there was no church council that decided scripture. Scripture was decided organically by the body of believers. And then later, much, much later, long after the canon was actually established in reality, a church council did put a stamp of approval on it, but that did not decide the scripture. That is something that, uh, you know, atheists will say that the, the church just arbitrarily decided on scripture. That's not how it came about at all. There was no meeting of the minds to, and some great meeting where they just decided to throw th some things out and keep other things that never happened. Uh, Avery, did you want to add anything about your position along these lines or? No, I was actually hoping we can continue talking with Anam on his on his. Yep, uh, yep, view. yep. I just wanted to get the super chat. So yeah, let I, I'd love to hear more about your unique beliefs. Uh, I I so also wanted to add that, sorry, that it's, you were, you were right though. Hypostatic union refers to the dual nature of Christ. Yeah, spoke over you. and then <laughs> Avery, um, when you said um, first you said Uthman, then you said Abu Bakr compiled uh, the Quran the first time. You were right the first time when you said Uthman. I just want to sharpen you up for right. next time you uh, have the box. But sorry, you were saying. Yeah, so I, I wanted to. I think the last thing we asked you about was if you believe if Jesus was crucified and um, and rose from the from the dead um, before like uh, the young brother came up. So I don't remember if you was able to give an answer. To that. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I'm, I was kind of hoping uh, mercifully I dodged the question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, you know, um, like, I think I, the answer that, that I did give was that, you know, I was so humbled by realizing I was wrong about the Trinity. Um, I'm open to the fact that I might be wrong about um, the way I grew up thinking about the crucifixion and that um, it never happened. But, um, and see, here's the thing though. So that's that's like the strange thing because you know, when, when you're actually, when you're arguing with the normal atheist, you know, like you just have to convince him about the resurrection. They wouldn't challenge the crucifixion. But for me, you know, um, I actually never thought too hard about even the crucifixion because it wasn't, um, you know, uh, it was just like not, you know, like for example, like atonement theology takes up half, you know, of like all the dogmatic, systematic theology, you know, of Christianity. So because it's not, you know, so I never, I never um, had to think about it too much. So mm -hmm. it never became a part of internalizing it so much. Um, I will say this. So I don't know. So I think, so, okay. But the, the question was also about the, the Quran, right? Cause I think somebody had, had hinted at that. Let me say there's two. So there's two on YouTube. It was kind of a um, internet controversy over the past year or two. There is a uh, Muslim scholar, Sheikh uh, mm -hmm. Imran Hussein, who said, mm -hmm. who rejected the replacement theory that yeah. you know I grew up with and most Muslims would adhere to. And he would yeah. say is when you look at the text itself, first of all, he says, and he's really funny when he would like, um, he says, first of all, why would God be so, un th th that is pathetic to say that God would be so unjust to take an innocent person and put him on a cross and that would delude all of the people. Um, and then that somehow is like, you know, God's victory over, you know, the, uh, the, the Jews and the Christians. Or yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, and he says, so the, first of all, the text doesn't say that. So please do not come here with that. Um, he calls it a pathetic, you know, and he's a South African, South Asian, you know, so he's like, pathetic, you know, so he's, he's very, uh, he has a thick accent going. He's very funny. Um, so then there is a young scholar who went to Harvard, uh, Khalil uh, um, Adnani. And Adani. he actually, yeah, thank you. So he he actually goes into okay, but, but now he's here's the, that's a secular academic scholar. More more seriously, you know, to the point there is there's on YouTube even a lecture by Dr. Ali Atai, who is mm -hmm. Egyptian, and he actually he's interviewed by Muhammad Hijab from from the UK. So he is like you know respected in the most respected online apologetic circles as an expert. And I was watching an early lecture of him. 
from a few years ago, and he didn't say this in a later lecture, but he says when you look at the Arabic of the crucifixion in the Quran, it's ambiguous enough to say that it happened. You know, um, so I don't know. Anyway, so I think there's like slowly as I as I look at this, you know, I think uh, so. Uh, w one of the things Adnani says uh, uh, is that you know, um, no. So the Imran Hussein says that. It says we we made it appear the Quran says that as though he died, you know. And in a way, that verse even says that like, well, you know, if somebody didn't, well, you know, came back from the dead, they didn't, you know, die in the final sense, right? So, um, anyway, so it leaves, you know, in other words, like, I think the more, and I'll say this also, like the first time, like a year ago or so somebody it was just a random person in a on a christian apologetic channel, channel like this she said to me that replacement theory was like proposed in the eighth century it kind of passed right over my head like i didn't i didn't understand what she was saying and i was like well you know of course she would say that and like you know of course we have the true interpretation but like when i saw it being challenged you know by by a muslim scholar and like other like academics as well um you know, and so it kind of got me to really, uh, um, so yeah, that answers the question, I think. I think that you can even read the Quran in a way that would affirm the resurrection. But um, I agree. this is not, yeah, but. Because um, there's another place in the Quran that says that Allah caused him to die, chapter mm -hmm. 3, verse 55. That he took so that soul. he should be, yeah, 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 yeah. It says something. Um, like uh, the you know because the Arabic is the Arabic also um, plays to a lot of the Aramaic, and so the 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 Syriac Christians they had their text in Aramaic. In fact, so actually at at the Prophet's time there was no New Testament in Arabic. You know the closest thing they would have had was an Aramaic, and even then it wasn't a complete Aramaic New Testament. You know would have would it would have been fragments or I said like a lectionary. So um, I think. Um, yeah, so you heard all that, Thaddeus? I'm glad. Yeah, so I, I missed you... a couple words here and there, but I, I definitely heard the, what you were saying about uh, how you can read the Quran as uh, affirming that Jesus died on the cross, and and I would agree as well. Uh, I think that is the most natural reading of the text. And when it says that they did not actually kill him, they only uh, thought they did or, or said they did, is that uh you know they they weren't in control like they were taking control they were they were claiming that they were responsible for this but ultimately uh god or allah was responsible and he was allowing this to happen i think that's the most natural reading of the text right um, and we also affirm the ascension. We here of course so, but <laughs> we also affirm the ascension you know so the idea is that he was raised to heaven in the flesh so like the narrative is is all but there um i don't know yeah, and I, so, I'm sure that you're probably familiar with the the theories about the Quran originally being a Christian text and being adapted to a new community. So with that possibility in mind, it, it's probably not actually that surprising that we do at least possibly see confirmation of uh, Christian doctrine in the text. So do you uh what, what's your position right now are you like uh saying no the crucifixion didn't happen still or are you like on the fence like it could have happened maybe maybe not i don't know right now um i really have to think about it and i think well okay i don't want to be coy but i'll uh, okay i'll tell you this i'm on well it, it's fun so on easter if you ask me, I think I'll say yes. But like the other 364 days of the year, I think I wouldn't like, and like I said, I don't think I, I it's something I could deny. Um, I wouldn't deny it. Because also like, for example, I'm, I mean, I'm, I know I, I'm going to get myself into a logical pretzel here, but like if my scripture says we affirm the prior scriptures, you know, and then you guys are good for knowing the scripture like your own sons, then you know um i'm affirming your scripture right so i really can't point to anywhere and say well this is where you know paul was exaggerating or something 
So I know, I know, I know, like, I'm, I don't know how to, um, there's a lot, but I'll, I'll say this though, the, the atonement theology is a lot, Christianity too. So I think like if I were to be a little, um, like I said, I'm still studying Nicaea. I'm trying to get to Chalcedon and Ephesus. A lot went down there. Um, and there is, you know, actually there was a schism with the Alexandrian church there too. So I'm trying to figure out between Alexandria, Antioch, Rome, Constantinople, what happened where and where, you know, um, I'm trying to figure all that out. Uh, and then, yeah. So are, you, this are, you, are you saying you don't know yet? Fiction. But here's the thing. If once I say I don't deny the event happened, and then I even say, okay, one day a year the event happened, and then the event happened, you know, um, you know, and then the other thing is then, okay, but here's the thing. Then no miracle is too great for God, you know, so the sense that he would revive it. So I think well, I will say this part of my journey, right? I'm on a journey. Part of my journey is that I didn't understand this ever, you know, until like, you know, the pandemic lockdown and, uh, you know, talking to Christians on, on uh, Discord server uh, is that, you know, when Christ was resurrected, he was resurrected in his glorified body. And that's the body we're all going to have, you know, on the day of judgment or in heaven. Um, so um, I never knew that. So, and, you know, like, for example, I, um, I watch Rob's uh, streams a lot. But so the thing is that the entire point of, like, Christ, like, coming, healing, and all that, that show, it's in line with his being, you know, Lord and creator and, you know, curios. But and so then the crucifixion completes that entire narrative. So, you know, it's like I'm up to like Mark chapter one, chapter two, and up to like chapter 10. And then for some reason, you know, over the, after that, you know, it's like I, that's your theology and not necessarily mine. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, there's a lot to digest. You know, like for example, there's a difference between Lutheran atonement and Catholic <laughs> vicarious atonement and the reenactment of Holy Mass. So, you know, anyway, yeah, so if, so I, if I want to hit the brakes, if I want to hit the brakes, I, I can hit vouch? the brakes anytime. Can I vouch for an arm for a moment? I just want to, like, yeah. just get my chance. Hey, hey, I mean, hey, hey, I've been waiting, though, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I mean, yeah, yeah. So, I've been here uh, before I mean, I've like, hey, I'm, I'm in serious. Relax, relax. Before everybody right, else. So, just, just one second, Ultimate, just one second. So, Rob, I, I say what you want to say uh, to, to vouch for an arm. Then I do want to take uh, a question or reason to believe in Islam from Ultimate, and then uh, really we can come back to Anam at the end, or or uh, he can schedule a time to talk to us uh, another day. Either or. Yeah, I'm just going to take not even a minute. It's just okay. It's just a little comment. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much I can share because it, it can be a little bit private uh, in regards to Anam, but I've known Anam for a few years now. He has, I've, I've welcomed him into the privacy of, say, my local church. He's attended uh, Bible studies that I run for my local church. He's familiar with those particular folk, made friends with them. He's in the Sentinel Discord. He's friends with everyone in the Discord. Uh, he has been reading, say, my my commentaries that I've written, but the commentaries are um, technically inspired by my local church who's asked me to run them through the biblical books. And also my, my, my endeavor into writing those commentaries is nothing but like kind of like a diary. It's, it's, it's just me going, say like in this case, Mark's gospel, I... I want to see the journey unfold for myself. Like I want to see what the scholarship says, what the gospel says, all that stuff. And and Anam, uh, I have to vouch for him. He's a faithful reader of of what I produce. It's not that I've requested that he reads it. It's just I've just done it out of the goodwill of my heart because I'm interested to see where this goes. I've then shared, you know, all that hours and hours of research and writing for free and um i i i haven't asked the nom to to do it but he goes out of his way to you know like if he if he comes across like a page that's really inspiring for him he'll actually show that in the discord server and he'll be like look check this out 
And so in that regard, I think Anam, I, I would consider him a brother, in my opinion. Um, and and I've, I've told him before that um, since he's acknowledged that it's still a journey for him, I'm completely fine with that because I'm coming from a very, myself, you know, a skeptical atheist background where any form of judgment about where he at, where he's at, I think should just be tempered down and just, yeah, like in other words, I like, I like where an arm is, is, is what I'm saying. So, uh, and I consider him a brother. So, yeah. Excellent. I'm going to read one quick super chat and then you're up ultimate. So from Islam Mentera over Dodd, could I call you guys? I speak Spanish. I made some videos in Spanish about Islam and Muslims were angry. I used Islamic sources. Why is that? Uh, so Ruth, um, you, you of course are welcome to come up uh, regular to my channel here. Uh, I know that your English is just fine. So I, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, I don't know about Avery or anyone else here. Um, but I know that that you you struggle to write it, but you're perfectly fine when you, you think about it and talk. So you're welcome to come up. All right. So Ultimate, you are up. What do you want to talk about? Assalamu alaikum to all the sisters and brothers. Auzubillah bin ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Rahman ar-Rahim maliki yawm al-din. Iyak nawiyya nashtayin zin usrad al-musaqim. Usrad al-anamta alayhim. Ghayr al-mawdub al-ibradhali. Rabbi sarah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa khudru dhu li sani wa khudru dhu li. Yes, sisters and brothers, peace be upon all of you. Yes, I, um, I believe that you do have answers for the Sunni Muslims. Uh, when it comes to the Quran confirming the Bible, I believe you're missing two verses uh, that you should be quoting to them. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be 565 and 566, and then there is another verse. Uh, I can't come to my mind yet, but I'm going to read th those two verses and uh, make some conclusion about it. 566, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, if only, if only Allah says, and I want Abbas to listen to this, please. If only the people of the book believed and lived a righteous life, I, Allah, will remit their sins and admit them in the gardens of bliss. Next verse. If only again, if only they, the people of the book, would uphold the Torah and the Injil and what is sent down therein, from their Lord, they would be showered with blessings from above and from beneath their feet. Some of them are righteous, but many of them are evildoers. Now, the conclusion is, uh, uh, God logic, Avi co quoted uh, earlier, uh, 548, I have given each of you their book, their legislation, their direction, their rights, so that you may compete. Uh, yeah, I jumped something. If I wanted to make you one community, I would have done that. I don't want to make you one community. I want I want to make you communities. I give you a different book. Each of you should, should ju judge by his book. Now, God is saying here, God is saying here, if only they can uphold the book. They got to uphold the book. Now, either... The Sunni Muslim and Abbas would have said, okay, even if the book is corrupted now, they got to do it. Even, even with, the, with the corrupted book. Okay, I was thinking of 543. They came physically to Prophet Muhammad. You're going to read 543. 543. Why? Why in the hell? That's how God said it, really. Why in the <laughs> hell? Yes. Why would they ask you to judge among them i.e. with the Quran, Prophet Muhammad is judging by the Quran, when they have the Torah containing God's laws, and they have chosen to disregard it, they are not believers. So anybody judged by the book, now if you saying that the, in, that, the, that the Bible is the book revealed, whether it is corrupted or not corrupted, 566 say they got to now, we're going to go to 568, just end this thing. 568, say, all people of the book, you have no basis, you're zero. 
you absolutely nada you niente you niche you nothing you ruined it too until you uphold the torah and the injil and what is sent down therein so clearly allah throughout the quran says the people of the book gotta uphold the torah and the injil now if they got to abbas had to admit that now even if the bible is if if the if the angel is the bible even if it is corrupted even if it is god is telling them you gotta judge by it there's no way around there is no way around now you fail to realize one thing sisters and brothers i had a debate with with uh, with god logic with every on this topic on this very exact topic it's just what one mistranslation translated the bible is not the bible the injil is the gospel is is the evangelion is the levangel that's the one gospel given to jesus if you just would admit it that ultimate truth from senegal that never spoke english in his life had to teach you that according to john according to luke according to matthew according to to to, to mark that's here says that's what they believe it is it's, i told him it's no more than Bukharian muslim according to abu huraira according to aisha according to abu bakar that's exactly what it is now i'm going to quote five uh, uh three three ninety three ninety three and three chapter three verse ninety three sorry Yes, 393. All food used to be lawful for the children of Israel until Israel himself prohibited uh, uh, certain things before the Torah was sent down. Say, bring the Torah, bring it and read it if you're truthful. Well, because you bring it. If you say somebody bring it, it's because it's not here. It's because you have it some places. Confirmed by. 3187 3187 says um god took a covenant with the who with the people of the book the bani israel you shall proclaim you shall open you, sh you shall show to the people the book and never conceal it but what did they did well, what did they do but they disregard it and uh, uh they they disregard it behind their backs and trade it away for a cheap price what a miserable price the miserable price is and the truth is the injil not the bible and the god and, and the torah are with the jews sent to them god telling them they're hiding it they need to bring it out as of today it's preserved now if we taking it as the bible we know the bible you know it i'm not going to teach you that it means what it means according to this guy it means that he's giving his account of what he thought the bible was well, let's say the the angel was mark the, the companions of mark or the friends of mark or the whoever was around mark yes mark had to be talking about the, uh, the about the angel luke had to be talking about it uh, uh, john had to be talking about it every matthew had to be talking about it yes people wrote and they said this is the gospel according to mark this is a gospel according to john this is a uh, bible according to mark and this is uh, this is a uh, this is a gospel according to luke it's here says it's not sent to you throughout the quran the injil is sent to the bani israel that's why it doesn't have they hiding their own treasure their own money their own book their own salvation salvation against themselves that's why all god right. is criticizing all right all right all right all right all right all right that's the conclusion that's the conclusion please just let me conclude please let me conclude please 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 don't do that Everybody spoke. Please, uh, right. please. We, 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 like, we like you speak for quite some time. So, are you serious? Finish in 30 seconds. Finish. Okay, give me 30 seconds. So, just please realize I'm going to read uh, Surah Al Asr. Well, Asr, you God is swearing. Seconds, but you're cutting me off, though. Please. Uh, what God is swearing by the afternoon that the man is in perdition. Till, uh, 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 I mean, except those 
who believe in Allah, lead a righteous life, and advise to themselves it to each other the truth and the and the patience. Why by Allah, you know this is the truth. You know it this is from in your hearts. This is the truth. The Bible is not sent, I mean, the angel is not sent to you, exclusively sent to, to, to the Bani Israel. You are supposed to be waiting for the prophet, uh, for the Ummi prophet, for the Gentiles. He came for us. We should be, up, we Gentiles should, should be upholding the Quran. The Bani Israel should be upholding, I mean, the Yahud should be upholding, upholding the Torah and the Nazara. The Nazara, not the Christians, the Nazarenes should be upholding the angel that are hiding from themselves. Assalamu alaikum. I mean, you don't want the truth. It's on you, brother. You, you, you had 45 seconds before we interrupted. You had about a minute total. So thank you. All right, go, Avery. <laughs> oh, nothing. I just wanted to tell you, um, uh, I'm, I have a stream to get on with uh, Chris Claus in about an hour, and I need to go get some food. So um, I enjoyed myself. Yeah. This, was, this was fun. This was amazing. Um, it was a pleasure meeting Anam. I can't wait to speak to you again, bro. And like, you know, just pick your brain a little bit more and, uh, you know, see where you're at on your journey. Cause I'm, I'm really like intrigued by this. Rob is always amazing seeing and hearing that voice of yours, you know, and I want to say God bless you to everybody in the chat, but yeah, so I'll, I'll be on, I'll be live again in an hour with Chris Claus on his channel. I'm just really hungry. <laughs> I can't do, yeah. I can't, yeah. I don't have the energy for ultimate fart right now. <laughs> hey no worries no worries thank you for coming on um I, I forgot to say this at the start but everyone if you're not already subscribed to god logic apologetics the link is in the video description be sure to check that out uh the main thing he does on his channel is conversations like this uh, well that in shorts he's been doing a lot of shorts lately but definitely <laughs> yeah. if you enjoy if you enjoy this stream check out that channel um i'll try to jump on one of his streams here in the near future so yes all right i love you guys love you everybody in the chat i'll see you guys in a little bit all right take care Get out of here. all right so uh you know i i've had this conversation with ultimate before so is there something anything you would like to say about what he just said rob And if not, <laughs> I, I have no comments <laughs> unless there's something unless there's something specific that he said that maybe you can remind me. Uh, uh, that yeah. Like so so the and... thesis here. So the thesis here is um, that the gospel was sent only for the children of Israel. Um, makes me wonder what the Torah was sent for, but. No worries about that. Uh, and that it has been hidden. And what we have in our Gospels is not the real Gospel. The real Gospel is hidden somewhere. And so mm -hmm. I'll just ask Ultimate Truth the same question I've asked before. And do you have, and that's, do you have any evidence for this outside well, of the Quran? I'll, I'll make a comment on that quickly. Um, okay. If he's, if he's saying that the Gospel that's literally in our New Testament today. And, and Anam, for example, he's heard me in recent Clubhouse discussions I've uploaded where it's, I had a light bulb moment a month or two ago uh, on this. Um, now that I've, I've become quite familiar, like with all this, again, when I mentioned a moment ago about all this like writing and research, I suppose I've reached a, a level of like having an eye for picking up certain details or thinking about certain things in this regard, like like how say critical scholarship and how the critical scholars will will think about these issues. Yeah, it's I just have to wonder: is it is it is it are we are we like two ships missing each other in the middle of the night? In the sense that, yeah, maybe the New Testament was not known to either Muhammad or the Muslims. And therefore, any engagement with the quote unquote Injil uh, is actually the, uh, the the literature that postdates the New Testament, uh, or, or basically the first century. And, and it thinks that that material is the Injil when really it's not. And ergo, if you reverse psychologize the, um, or reverse engineer the, the argument, 
I he's just he's just making my point that yeah, if the New Testament that we have today is not the Injil, then you have to believe that it is a corrupted form of the Injil. But ironically, so it's affirming my point. Uh, but at the same time, you're you're being ahistorical because the New Testament predates the so-called Injil that the Quran thinks is the Injil, which is the you know the apocrypha, the Gnostic text, all that stuff. So um, because every and again, my challenge is, and, and the reason so in conclusion, the reason why I raise this, the more I've read in Second Temple literature and the apocrypha stuff, and you know all this intertextual backing with respect to the New Testament. So scholars like currently, you know, the late Michael Heiser, um, who passed earlier this week, like his works is is huge on this intertextual overplay of say, say like how the New Testament authors utilize say the Book of Enoch in a lot of their writings, right? Um, now that I've had a, um, like, like now that I've reached a level of of uh, comfort, I suppose, of of again having an eye for picking up certain things. So when I so when I so I just thought to myself, why don't we just look at Adam to Jesus in the Quran, based on what the Quran thinks Adam and Jesus is, like from Adam to Jesus, all the biblical characters. Do we have any overlap with the Bible? And to my <laughs> for an arms case my shock and horror is uh hang on there is no biblical overlap yes there's a biblical overlap if you if you're seeing it through the lens of the apocrypha and the second temple text and the pseudobigrapha and the gnostic text but this but but those texts are the primary texts that the quran utilizes or the author of the quran utilizes that in turn those texts are then relying on say the biblical narrative because that's how they that's how those texts get those characters anyway because it's ultimately it's the biblical narrative that that gives those characters but it's these extra biblical texts that embellish the stories and write different things that's happened or even brand new stuff that's that's happened that that doesn't occur in the biblical text um that appears in the quran so the so yeah, I mean you're, you're proving my point or the thesis that I'm hypothesizing here. Um, so yeah, so yeah, what Rob is getting at is that the Bible has been abundantly studied. The Islamic texts have been studied to a lesser degree in critical scholarship, but still widely studied, and you're coming up you're coming to us with a theory that has precisely zero historical support for it. The only thing, as far as I know, you can back it with is your own interpretation of what the Quran really means. In fact, to, uh, to, and, give, a, to give a quick analogy, so Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, okay? This is because I was watching it with a friend the other day. Uh, actually, now I'm it's uh, Christiana. <laughs> uh, you know, she finally saw the Peter Jackson trilogy. Um, she loved it. But I had to also inf inform her that Tolkien, there's a lot of creative license that Peter Jackson did on Tolkien's original work. That's what the Apocrypha and the Subigrapha does with respect to the Bible. So the Bible is Tolkien. And then the Apocrypha, Subigrapha, Gnostic literature is Peter Jackson. Or, you know, Peter Jackson's like interpretation of Tolkien's work. It's the same thing. So the Quran thinks Peter Jackson is the original work. That's the point. When really, no, no, no. Tolkien is the original work, and Peter Jackson's just doing an interpretation of his work. So my question back to you, Ultimate, is, well, first of all, I wanted to point, when you said that you only got five minutes to talk in the chat and other people got longer, well, no, it said that you were done, done. But this is a discussion, not a monologue. Uh, you know, five minutes for a monologue was sufficient. Uh, now we're having a discussion, and and I, my question is, do you have any evidence for this? Because my my belief in Christianity is based on historical evidence, 
Uh, Rob's belief in Christianity is based on historical evidence. Uh, Anam is very interested in historical evidence. So that's what we're interested in here. Um, you know, I don't need to dispute your, your understanding of the Quran because it's irrelevant. Uh, even if I grant that you're understanding the Quran correctly, all you're telling me is that uh, you believe in something different than other Muslims, but you still have no position, no evidence for it. So the title of this stream is what is your best evidence that Islam is true? And I throw it back to you. What evidence do you want to bring? Thank you, brother. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you. You and God Logic, you're the only two Amen. that let me speak. <laughs> yes, I do appreciate you. I do. Uh, I know how how Sunni Muslim. I I am in a I am in a clubhouse thing. I know how what what Sunni Muslims do to us, Quran Ron followers, and to you guys. I've seen it, and what, what and what Christians do. Like I mean, all of them. I don't want to call names because you be. I know you hate people to say names in here. That's fine when it comes to saying negativity about them. But I appreciate. I told you that before, and I I am I'm renewing it. You the only one. Even though, yeah, I can tell, you know, you didn't let me enough time. Uh, brother spoke, the guy who was at work spoke for, 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 for 35 minutes. I was, I, I've been here before. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, it's not a big deal. But the proof now, you're asking me what evidence do I have? The only yeah. evidence we have are the scriptures. Now, if I can prove it to you, if, if I can prove to you that the Quran is, it cannot be human made, you will take anything said in the Quran. Just give me one objection. Tell me ultimate truth. I'm agreeing with you that the Quran yeah. does affirm the, the Injil. I'm agreeing with uh, you I, that the Quran. You, did you was yeah. that a question for me? Because uh, I can answer it. Yes, if you could prove the Quran is from God, then I would believe what it has to say. I I, I give you one example. I just give you one or oh, two two examples. It might take about two or three minutes, but hey, I got. Uh, God is God is naming people. God is just uh, calling people uh, a lot of names: uh, Abraham, Moses, Adam. Anyway, he's he's telling. Uh, I would love to say something about the about the objection earlier about uh, if this was from uh, if this was not if this was from other than Allah, you know, it's going to be contra it's going to be numerous contradictions. Right? I would love to say something about this. But for now, in your question, to prove to you that the Quran is from God and cannot be human made. Now, you're just going to remember that the Quran was revealed for three, for 23 years. God is calling names. He's calling Abraham. He's calling Isaac here, Jesus here, Adam here. You're thinking this is just random. I'm going to give you the case of Noah. Noah, uh, this is, this is going to fix the number of chapters in the Quran. It's going to fix that the Quran cannot be man-made. No way. Noah is in the Quran 43 times. I can give you, if you want the verses, I can uh, give you all the verses. And just tell me I'm wrong anywhere you want. You can verify that. Every single verse. And you can tell me, yes, you're right, Ultimate. Every single one of you listeners or anything, you will confirm this 43 times the name Noah, 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 Noah in the Quran. In 28 chapters, and if 43 verses, like in verse in chapter 11, it's there nine times. In chapter Noah, which is chapter, uh, which is, uh, chapter 71, is there three times. Total 43 times in 28 chapters. Now, the last chapter that contains the name Noah is a chapter Noah. Chapter Noah is what chapter? I said 43 times in 28 chapters. 43, 28, 70, 71. Chapter Noah is 71. Chapter Noah is the last chapter to show me one chapter after chapter 71 that has the name Noah. You want how many chapters is that? 43 from 72 to 114 is seven. It is 43 chapters. So the last 43 chapters of the Quran do not have Noah whatsoever. And I just said there is there are 43 Noahs in the Quran. Now it's now it's 71 chapters left from chapter one. Fatiha to chapter Noah, there are 40, 28 of them contains 43 Noahs. What is 71 minus 28? 43. So in the first 71 chapters, 43 has no Noah, 28 has 43 Noahs, and the last 43 chapters have no Noahs. 
You tell me this from God, uh, uh, from other than God. Muhammad, three times his death is 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 prophesied in the Quran. Only three times, Prophet Muhammad. This this is the second example. Only three times God said to Muhammad, "I will do the same way." He said to Jesus, "I am terminating your life." He said to Muhammad, "I will terminate your life three times." Chapter forty, verse seventy-seven. You can verify. It. Chapter chapter thirteen, verse forty. You can verify it. That, that that's the, that's the expression. In, or if you will terminate your life. And chapter ten, verse forty-six. Chapter forty, chapter thirteen, and chapter ten. Forty years old, he was sent. Thirteen years he spent in Mecca. Chapter thirteen. Ten years he spent in, in Medina. Is sixty-three. So he died in the eleventh year of 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 of, of Hijr, eleventh year, chapter sixty-three. He was sixty-three, forty plus plus uh, plus uh, thirteen and plus ten. That's sixty-three. That's his. That's the number of years he lived. And if you go to chapter sixty-three now, chapter sixty-three now, in chapter sixty-three, in chapter sixty-three, have eleven verses, and that, that eleventh verse is the one that said, "Your time have come. You gone. You will be sixty-three years old." It will be the year 11 of Hijr, and you'll be dying. This, I, I got I got numerical verses. I got a million proof. Okay. God said. So, yep. So, so we got your argument. Uh, this is going to be the numerical evidence, um, numerical miracles, however you want to phrase it. Ask, uh, there's several things I want to say about this. But first, Ask Truth just pointed out that you're relying on the Hadith to determine Muhammad's age. You don't believe that the Hadith are accurate. Now you're using the Hadith dates to try to argue for the accuracy of the Quran. So I want you to explain that inconsistency first. It's not an inconsistency. I'm telling you, I, I never quoted the, 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 the Hadith. I'm telling you, Allah said to Muhammad, well, I where did you get, you. Where'd you get Muhammad's age from if it wasn't from a hadith? The Quran certainly doesn't say anything about Muhammad's age. I just told you, you will be living 63 years old. You'll be at, four, at, at the age of 40. I will send where, you. Where did you get, where did you get the age of 40? Where did you get the All? age of 63? Telling me yeah. isn't, you're giving me a number, but where are you getting that number from? That number's not found in the Quran. Uh, uh, listen, uh, first of all, uh, you you just gotta let me elaborate. Chapter forty, I said, at forty he was sent. I will send you. Uh, I will tell you how I got it. Right. Chapter thirteen, okay. no, he will no, send thirteen. No, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to move on. So let's just focus on this forty, right? Chapter forty, Muhammad sent at age forty. You're trying to draw a, a some sort of evidence from the fact that chapter number forty has something to do with Muhammad being sent at age forty. Where? How do you know Muhammad was sent at age forty? The Quran. I just told. I just quoted the verse. Let me tell you. So, okay, let me so, finish. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Wait. Bro, you gotta. If you let, ask let me a question, let, let me just understand. Let me just understand what you're saying. You're saying that the Quran says that Muhammad was sent at age forty. Is that what you're saying? That that that's what I'm saying, and I can prove it to you, in the Quran. Okay. If you let me speak, you just need to let me speak. But if, if, if you're cutting me off like that, I can't elaborate. Well, no, I no. Would, so I'm, ultimately, this is a dialogue. Okay. This is how I understand that. And, that and, that's why I'm asking you. I questions. don't want you to make 20 points and then we have to go back and talk about each point individually. I want to take it one point at a time. So okay. if you want to give some evidence that I will. Muhammad is 40, according to the Quran, I will listen. Okay. Chapter 40 starts the Hamims, the initials Hamim. Is from chapter 40 to chapter 46, seven of them. 40 to 46 is Hamim, 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 Hamim. Guess what is chapter 47? Chapter Muhammad. Four, seven chapters, 40, like I told you, he was sent at 40. 40, chapter 40, the seventh Hamims, Hamim, 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 Hamim. Chapter 13 is the only Alif Lam Mim Sod. Chapter 10 starts the Alif Lam Ra's. Alif Lam Ra, Alif Lam Ra, look, look. Alif Lam Ra is five times. It's chapter 10, 11, and 12. Chapter 13 in between, Hijra, 
you gotta move out of mecca go to medina and then chapter uh, and then chapter 14 and 15 come back to alif lamra i can prove it to you this is not a big I'm deal not seeing an age from any of this i i'm not seeing an age Open the book. To, like, make an age relative to another age i'm not seeing any age for muhammad at any point in his life in the quran even if I grant these totally arbitrary pointing out of different numbers in the Quran, um, which I won't. I mean, I would dispute that absolutely. This is, I'm actually a mathematician by trade. Uh, this is total nonsense. But I can't even do that because I can't even get to the argument to begin with because I don't even know where this 40 is coming from or, or age 53 or 63 or whatever ever other ages you cited. There are no ages, so there can be no coincidence on the the ages matching up with numbers in the Quran if we don't even know what the ages are to begin with. Okay, okay, forget the ages. Forget, forget it. Forget the forget the age right, of Muhammad. We'll throw that one out. That one's gone. Yeah. All right. Now, do, do you have any objection when it comes to Noah? You think God put forty three Noah? In... All right. So I, said... I, I I'm going to assume there's forty three Noahs. I mean, Sometimes these. I mean, these I mean, just things. go to Google. Just go. I mean, I can give you every verse if you want me to. No, no, no. I just, I'm granting it. I'm granting it because it's irrelevant. I'm just going to say. No, if it is like that. Mathematical things. I'm granting there's if 43. Can you let me finish, go please? Ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, the, sorry. I'm, I'm saying there's 43 Noahs. I haven't confirmed it. I'm willing to believe you there's 43 Noahs in the text. So then you, you, you made observations about the number of surahs that become before the first mention the number that come after this is what's going to happen with all of these mathematical things they work when they work and they don't work when they don't work and only when they work are they pointed out it, there's nothing special about there being the same number of chapters before or after uh, the order the numbers of the of the chapters is totally arbitrary they're organized from longest to shortest with the exception of surah one and maybe every once in a while where there was an air made from two surahs that are almost identical in length they there's no order of revelation muhammad never said to order them in a certain way a the numbers are just arbitrary even if they weren't arbitrary you're going to find these coincidence like these in any text if you look hard enough i i can guarantee it so this will be my challenge to you. you pick a text that you want me to look at i will find a similar coincidence and i can't do it live because it takes time to try to find a coincidence that you want to emphasize but you pick a text i will look at the text you picked and if i find a similar numeric coincidence in that text that will demonstrate that the argument needs more substantiation than there exists these numbers do you understand what i'm saying yeah, I understand. Uh, I understand what he's saying. But what, all, all I'm saying is this: we was talking about earlier if this that this cannot be man, uh, human made. As of today, uh, I can I can give you the number. The first chapter, uh, the whole Bakara, the biggest chapter in the Quran, does not have one time no, not once. Find one one time no in the in Bakara. Three thirty three is the first chapter. Four one sixty three, six eighty four, uh, 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 chapter. Seven, uh, verse 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 uh, uh, sixty nine nine seventy ten seventy one eleven twenty five. I can go all the way to seventy one twenty six. That's the last chapter. Now this is this 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 being revealed for twenty three years, and you can advance the way that now chapter no now think about no chapter no. What is no no about? No is about the flood, right? Right? It's clear in the Quran. Right. It's clear even in your Bible, right? Sure. Now. Uh, chapter Nuh, you, do, do you know what, what, what chapter Nuh represent? The percentage of, of, of water on earth and the number of verses of chapter Nuh represent the percentage of land on earth. Google it. Google what is the percentage of water on earth and what is the I percentage of land on earth. Google it. I, I'm familiar with these types of arguments. And, and the same objection, it doesn't matter what the specifics are, the same objection is going to hold. There's an infinite number of different ways you can look at numbers and, and rearrange them and, and come up with what by itself is highly unlikely. I will grant that it's highly unlikely 
that, uh, you know, there's 43 NOAAs. That is irrelevant. That when you're calculating a probability, you have to look at the scope uh, of the possible domain. So it doesn't matter how, in, let's say it's a million to one chance that, that there were, NOAAs would fit all the patterns you say. And it would take some difficulty in, in, in higher math to calculate the exact probability. Let's just say it's a million to one. Well, if there's a million different possible conclusion, like there's a million different possible ways you can rearrange numbers, and there's actually an infinite number, but if there's a million different ways, then you would expect there to be one that's only a one out of a million chance of, of it being that way. So these right, let me mathematical you... things to, to substantiate. So that doesn't that doesn't say that it it cannot possibly work, but to substantiate it, you need to have an objective basis on which to develop the field. So let let me um, people have tried to do the same sort of thing from the Bible. There is a famous work called the Bible Code, a, a uh, in, in this case, it was a Jewish person trying to confirm the Old Testament. And they fed all of the letters of the Hebrew Bible into a computer. They uh, formed new words based on every third character, every fifth character, you know, whatever, like like that. So like every third character, they looked for a word. And then they looked for the shortest uh, occurrence of famous rabbis' names in the text. And then they looked for other words that were nearby. And they, they said, oh, with, uh, this is extremely unlikely that the correct attributes for the, all these famous rabbis would be right near their name. And in this case, they, they were very good and very sophisticated, and they actually calculated the probabilities. And they actually stood up to scrutiny on the probabilities themselves. But the problem is, that the data is cherry picked. And, and here you haven't even proven these things are unlikely. And you still have the cherry picking problem. You only will observe it when it works. Like for example, people like to go to iron and they say that, you know, iron's mentioned 146 times or, you know, what, however you work out the exact math to get it to equal to its atomic number. It doesn't work with gold. Gold is mentioned in the Quran. It doesn't work with silver. Silver is mentioned in the Quran. It doesn't work with copper. Copper is mentioned in the Quran. No one cares that it doesn't work for any of those things. But because it kind of sort of works with iron and it's actually off by one, uh, it's somehow a miracle. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Human beings are amazing at, develop, uh, at detecting patterns. And because of our amazing ability to detect patterns, we sometimes detect patterns that aren't actually there. And that's what these mathematic things boil down to. To actually form an argument, you would need an objective basis on to decide when, uh, on what you're searching for, because you can search for Noah being there 43 times and, and there being a relationship between the different 43s. It doesn't mean anything. Noah could have been there 32 times and there could have been a relationship with the number 32. There's an infinite space without any criteria to judge these miracle claims. So, so it's a coincidence. I'll give you another one. God said this is from God, right? God said the Quran is from God, right? If it was from anything other than God, you would have found numerous contradictions, right? This from God. He said a million times, this from your this this from the Lord of, of, of the universe. Some guy now, some guy in the Quran said, No, this is nothing but human made. In chapter 74, some guy said, This is nothing but human made. God told him that 19 are, 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 is gonna prove to you that this is not human made. 19 is going to prove to the world. Um, we speak in the universal language, mathematics. Every chapter has so many verses. Some got three, the, the smallest and the biggest got 286. You think it's random. Now I want you to do, I want to every single one of you to go home and do this. See if 19 will prove it to you. Write down chapter one is Fatiha. Followed by how many verses? Seven. Followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then write down two. Followed by how many verses? 1 to, 100, to 286. All the way to chapter 114. Write down 114 and followed by six verses in it. Followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is a number long of 12,000 
692 digit number. It's a multiple of 19. Okay. 19 is you a prime number. That one I can find easily for you. You know what the probability of a number being a multiple of 19 is? Zero. No, it's one, one out of 19. One out of every 19 no. numbers is a multiple of 19. Yeah, it, it's five out, yes. Now, this is so a 12,000 digit number, 12,000. It, it, it's irrelevant how long the digit. So okay, hey, bro, it's, it, it's it, on you. It, one out of every, every 19th number is a multiple of 19. It doesn't matter how long it is. And, and notice, again, that you've made an arbitrary choice uh, of putting the numbers next to each other. Why didn't you just add them up? Why didn't you just count how many verses there are in the Quran? Is the number of verses in the Quran a multiple of 19? No. Well, that didn't work. So we try something else. Oh, let, let's take the chapter number and, and, and put all those no. in a row. Does that work? No. Let's put all the verses. Does that work? No. Oh, if we do the chapters and verses, that works. That is. This is the miracle. That is. God, God used the rabbis to, to make a miracle of number 19, right? To copy from the oh, rabbis. Tadeus, Allah said, he is al-awwal, he is al-akhir, he is the alpha and the omega. Uh, okay, so I have a related Hold question on. for you, ultimate. I, I, Go ahead. Are Go ahead. The, the verse numbers inspired? I mean, are the chapter numbers inspired? Well, either question, actually. Are the chapter numbers inspired or are the verse numbers inspired? Or are those I just prove it I just prove it. Revelation? No, I just prove it. it. <laughs> you writing down you one as chapter you one. You proved that one out of the infinite yeah, number of different now. ways. Now, can, can I answer your question? Range numbers. Do that. No, no, ultimate, ultimate. This is very important. If the verse numbers are not inspired, then there is no revel. Then there is no possibility of there being a mathematical beer number based on their. Numbers, right? There can't be a miracle if their numbers aren't inspired. So you have to can start a human with the assumption they're can, inspired. Yes. Can a human being write a book like that fourteen hundred years ago? Yes. Just the number. Of course, they would have a. One you out could of not. Chance. You could not write down twelve thousand six hundred ninety-two numbers divided by nineteen. You could not. Ultimate. Come on now. Come on, please. You're not please. listening to me. You're not listening to me. It no, doesn't matter listen. how many digits I, are I in hope the number. You have an in a two-digit number, there's a one out of nineteen chance it's a multiple of nineteen. In a three-digit number, there's a one out of nineteen chance it's a multiple of nineteen. In a four-digit uh, yes. number, there's a one out of one out of nineteen. 19. Over here, it's one out of a hundred, though, in the Quran. <laughs> no, it's one out of nineteen. Well, I mean, you, I mean, it's a hundred out of hundred, though. You, what I mean to say you is, what with nineteen, you started with nineteen. What I meant to say was, it's a hundred out of a hundred in the Quran. Well, yeah, you said it's one out of nineteen. So, a human so it's five that. out of a hundred percent in the Quran. It's a hundred percent nineteen. A hundred percent. If you would let, let okay. me proceed. Yes. No, no, because you need to answer this question: Are the verse numbers inspired? Are the chapter numbers inspired? I said yes. I just proved it to you. Yes. Because okay. no human, inspired, made, no is human being. Inspired? Is the verse is yes. the chapter I order inspired? By the example I give you, if I can have 30 seconds to answer, by the example I just gave to you, 114 chapters, no is, is proven to you that, that there are 114 chapters. Chapter 43, it had to be 43 behind no. Chapter no 71, it had to be 43 chapters behind that. From 72 to 114, just, that's 43. Just repeating yourself. I can I'm telling up, you. I, I, I can come up with identical patterns in any other text. You start with 19, and then you find things that fit 19. There's no objective reason why you should put the chapter number, and then the verse number, and then the next chapter number, and the next verse number. You could have done that in a, quite a variety uh, of ways. Like I said, you could have put just uh, the chapter numbers. You could have actually added the chapter numbers. You could have put just the verse numbers. You could have actually added the verse numbers together. You could have arranged them in from order from last to first. You could put verse number and then chapter. You could do all kinds of different order of rearranging things. None of those are going to work. The only one that works is the one that you're gonna cite. This is the definition of cherry picking the data. Let me prove to you that, that, the, that, that, the verse number, that the verse and the chapter numbers are from God. I'll give you a random chapter like that. Chapter 93. Uh, chapter, cha cha chapter 27. Except it's not going to be, it's not going to be random because you're going to pick Hold something on, that you already know. I mean, works. you're going to let me talk, though. Yes. It's going to work in every chapter. One, two, three, every oh, okay. single one. Okay, okay. Two, okay. Two, right. two big one. Okay. 
You can't that uh, please you have please. to have so, no, no, number. So, the rabbi oh, is hold, on. hold on, hold that on, is, hold on. So Let me read it. 50, 50, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, okay. Let's go to the mood. Let me yeah. copy from the Jewish Talmud. So God need the rabbis to make uh, Quran miraculous. And that story for chapter 263 was copied from Babylonian Talmud that did not even uh, existed in the time of the Christ. It was invented in the 3rd century and put uh, oh. about uh, 5 or 6th six, century in the Babylonian Talmud. So that verse you, 263 you, is from the Talmud. So God, God, you can make God, God need a rabbi to, to make miraculous Quran? Are you crazy? You, uh, okay, uh, you can make vain claims. Uh, it doesn't matter. Every, everyone heard this will go and verify it and they will know it's truth. Now, let yeah, me give you yeah. chapter 20. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Pick, pick hold actual on. random numbers. Pick actual random let numbers. Me. And do the okay, let me that, see, though. That ultimate proof has, has. Give yourself. Do you realize that? Do you realize that? Hey. Do you realize that? If you would have just moved one chapter, or you would have added one verse to any chapter, or you just any chapter, you added you just added one that, verse. Or, one hold on, chapter, hold on, though. Verse. I mean, let me speak, really? though, bro. You're, 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 added you're, you're, chapter. Chapter. Oh, don't do that, bro. Like, don't don't do that. People you. Your your guy that that invented that story, Khalifa, yeah, do that, guy. Khalifa he was killed because he, he he was mis messed up with the Quran. He was added okay. some verses. And they killed uh, him. Ultimate Truth actually is a follower of Rashid Khalifa, I believe. Uh, chapter, no, chapter, know. chapter chapter 27 is called Chapter Annamal. Why is it called Annamal? The Namal, the what, what, you, uh, the, what is it in English? The Namal. Uh, I, I, really, I really don't need another example. I, but, there are but, thousands but, but, of these but, examples. But, They're all going to have the same criticism. That they're arbitrary. Okay, but let, me just, but, but let me say it though. Just, just let me give, I mean, give me 10 seconds. That's all I want. Okay. 10 okay. seconds. So, so, so give, give your example. This will be the last one. And I'll explain. Okay. The last why. example I will give, the last example I will give is chapter, I, I could give a, you, you could give me any, chapter 2, chapter 30, chapter 50, so chapter 114, any. But chapter 27 is chapter unnumbered. Why is it called unnumbered? Why? It's only a ants, the ants. All ants ran. Uh, one of the ants, when uh, when uh, Solomon approached the valley of the ants, one of the ants said, "Oh ants, why is it called chapter ants? Why?" Didn't say nothing. Ants is one verse. Is verse eighteen. Came hold, up on, with hold on, hold on, hold on. Decided to name it that. Oh, oh, hold on, though. No, oh, I'm, all right, I'm, all right. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have interrupted you. I shouldn't have interrupted you. Go ahead and, and finish your. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know the, the truth. Uh, the truth. I, I'm going to teach you the, the truth. Just that. That's what it does. Uh, chapter 27 is is chapter number. It's called La Sin. La Sin. That's chapter 27. And count how go count how many laws in there is 27. How many scenes in there is 93. The chapter is chapter 27 and has 93 verses. That's a coincidence too. Is that a coincidence? Uh, a name of the chapters are I multiple times. But, yeah, but let, just let say me it's just, a coincidence. It's a coincidence. Yes, it's a coincidence. Okay. What, what it really is is cherry picking the no. data. Really <laughs> because you only go to something that works. Name of the suppers are ad added later. It was not original names in the time of the Muhammad, not even from, from your uh, Islamic history, man. The name of the chapters, gonna... chapters are added later on the Quran. It's like not, not always was that names, you know. I was gonna prove to you. I was gonna prove to you. 
Ultimate. Why is it called let now? Me, why is it let called Andaman? Let, let me wrap okay, this go up. Ahead. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So go ahead. you're gonna whatever I go to, you're gonna have some coincidence because you're very you're very versed on these numbers. So here is my challenge to you. Okay. You well, first let me ask, do you is the Book of Mormon inspired by God? It's a yes. It's a simple question. Is the Book of Mormon inspired by God? The, the Book of who? Book of Mormon. What's the Book of Mormon? Okay. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> it's it's the. Uh, you're not from America, so you're not well versed God, in, the, in the God, the God, but, but, God, God, uh, So the Mormons God, God. are a religion. Uh, can you just let me finish? So they are a religion yeah. that claims that their prophet revealed scriptures to them. And one of those. Oh, scriptures I thought they were Christian. I thought Mormons was Christians using the Bible. I don't know. I mean, all I'm saying is, God yeah, is telling yeah, us the fine. book. That... Okay. God so, is telling so, us. God... Can, so Bro, you don't think that their book is inspired, know. correct? Is their book inspired? Bro, can I answer the is question? The, is the book that Joseph Smith revealed revealed? I don't know. The, the all I'm telling you, the book inspired by God. Why? Why can't you just answer this question? It's just, just a simple I, no. I, I That's all you have to book, say. Any book. Let me answer. Bro, you, you can impose me an answer. Please. You cannot take you. I not whether you think the Book of Mormon is inspired or not. Why do you need to? I said the only, book, the only book, the only books I can, I cause the inspired by God are the book named by God, Allah in the Quran. That's it. Okay. That's so, it. no, the Book of Mormon is not inspired. Great. Now, pick a random number. I, I never said I don't that. know how many chapters are in I the never book said that. Don't put words in my mouth. Allah named some <laughs> books in the Quran, oh, Allah named the Injil. Alani, bro, yes, you're putting you words even in my mouth. That the Book of Mormon is not inspired. Can you name a book that's not inspired? Then, Can, is the New York by City God? phone book inspired by God? Book of Mormon are you was serious? written. You, are know, you, serious? Uh, you see, you see, uh, uh, Bart Ehrman made a little comment and said, "Hey, uh, I can find a phone book." <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not going to be contradictions in it. It's, That's the dumbest so argument. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ultimate. Just Let give me, me any book, any freaking book you consider uninspired. Just name a book. The Injil, the Torah, the Injil, the Torah. Not inspired. There not we go. Inspired. <laughs> not inspired. Give me what any book inspired? that's not inspired. What book claims to give to Moby Dick? In front of me. Is this book inspired by God? Bro, I was hoping you would have objections to what I said. I was hoping. I was hoping that you would have objections that we should be following the Quran as a Gentile. Name a book that's uninspired. That's not inspired. Name any book that's not inspired by God. There's a reason I want you to name a book. Name a book. Any book that is God. not in the Quran yeah. is not inspired by God. That's okay. it. The, the Book simple. of Mormon. Great. The Book of Mormon. Now, I don't know offhand how many chapters wait, 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 are. Wait, wait. Pick a okay, random wait, chapter. Wait. Let, me, let me summarize this. You, you've just hit the nail on the head there, uh, Wahid. You've literally now just... This, this is the crux. You literally just said, any other book apart from the Quran is not inspired. By God, I'm talking by God, yes, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I can inspire you, I can inspire you to write a book as a human being. That's but, why inspi inspired is vague. Yes, it's vague. So no no one book. cares about your random waffling. Okay. It's a very okay. simple question. I just need a book. So, it, it, it's totally so, relevant what book you pick. Exactly. Going with the Book of Mormon, all right? Yeah. Now pick. Why are you running away from my now. reasoning? Why are you running away from my reasoning? I reasoned you. <laughs> if you, if you, you me finish, if you answer my freaking questions, you'll know yeah, why. Now, mad. now, now you're out of yourself. Now you're mad for for no reason. You know, everybody expecting me to be mad. I am not mad. I am calm. Now you you're answer uh, the please. Question. <laughs> you asked me if the book, of, I don't know what the book of Mormons, I don't know what it is. I said every book I that is the book of of okay, okay, okay. 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 number between That's one it. and 52. Is Talmud I don't know what God is first? Is Talmud I don't know God is first? All right. Just pick a number between one and 52. It's not a complicated question. 
I'm going to prove <laughs> to you that these numbers are arbitrary and you can do it with any text. So I picked I'll a random doing. text and now I'm picking a random chapter. You understand? I, I'm asking you I'm asking you to pick any chapter between the one and 114. I will prove to you that one should be one, 90 should be 90, 140 should be. All right. He's scared. All right, he's gone. I, I, can, <laughs> I cannot handle that anymore. He's scared. I, I literally, I literally had to argue <laughs> with him for five minutes whether or not he, the Book of Mormon was inspired or not because he just wouldn't answer the freaking question. All I was going to say is when he said no, I was going to pick a random chap to ask him how to pick a random chapter, and then I was going to ask him if I can find a 19 pattern in that chapter, okay, can you will you convert to more? Tadius, let's go along with this because yeah. you know, I, I didn't know you worked in the field of math, so like, let's, let's do this. Let's actually demonstrate the divine inspiration of the Book of Mormon through mathematical patterns. <laughs> Because this can be done with Moby Dick. I mean, it's <laughs> the phone book. I even gave him the, the the verse from the Talmud, you know, from the last show that is that is written after Christ, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, I told him read two, three, because it's it's a copy from the Avodak Zarak from Talmud we... two base seventeen. What, why why did he go down to the mathematical argument? Like, why can't he just discuss the content in the Quran? Why does he have to go down to mathematical patterns? Because, because the Rob, his follower of Arashar Khalifa, uh, that guy was like some self-proclaimed Muslim uh, prophet, and he finds that miraculous number 19 in the Quran. And because not all ayah and not all examples fit that number 19 rule, uh, he tried to add some stuff, some words to the Quran or put it out. And some Muslims figure out that he like uh, messing up with the Quran. So some lunatic kill him even, you know, that guy is dead. Yeah, so uh, I'm pretty oh, sure wow. from previous conversations that Ultimate Truth is okay. actually a follower of Rashid Khalifa, but he, he yeah, made yeah, the 19th work by altering the Quran. And then Muslims found out <laughs> yeah. he had altered the Quran. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. and they ended up executing him. And, um, and even he was on the Christian Prince channel, and he show him, you know, he basically give him the Quran and show him that uh, that rule why, cannot be applied. What, mm -hmm. And regardless, what is significant of this? Because let's just hypothetically say there's number patterns, like legitimate number patterns in the Quran. Okay, in other words, there's a deliberate, intelligent, and intelligent an intentional intelligent numberings uh, on purpose. So what? Because because I can point out, say, the Book of Enoch uh, or Second Temple texts that have heptatic structures that are intentionally placed there um, for numerical poetry, um, because that's what Semitic cultures did. They they wanted to uh, make, uh, so for example, when you and I write, I don't know, say a letter or a correspondence, or like for example, Paul's writings, right? Like when Paul writes a letter to say Colossa or the Romans, he's not thinking about say the, um, <laughs> the structure of his letter, he's just writing a letter. But there are texts in the ancient world that uh, the author already had an in intent of making it art artistic and you know, like what's known as a chiasm or a chiastic structure from start to finish. Ma Interestingly enough, Mark's gospel fits this phenomenon of what's called intercalation. So, or, or you know, to, to paraphrase the word intercalation, uh, a type of sandwiching. So, for example, you know how a sandwich has like a top layer, a, a, a top bread layer and a bottom bread layer, and then in between is all the content of the sandwich. So there's this phenomenon of like there's a statement, then there's the sandwiching part where suddenly it goes into like a tangential point and then it comes back to the main statement again. And hence that falsifies our chiasm that can, that can fit a numerical structure as well. Um, this is why the Jews went so far afield with this, with what's called the Kabbalah. You know, the, the Kabbalah is nothing but fine mystical mysteries and numbers and, you know, yeah, all these... 
it, it's named Sot in the in the Jewish uh, exactly methodology. the Sot yes Sot. exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, and so this is so this is not new to or this is not special to the Quran it's it's just a phenomena now okay in fact <laughs> this is what makes it so ironic if it's not new or special or unique to the Quran what does that imply that if that is a genuine phenomena in the Quran what does that imply about its ultimate origin if human beings are doing this pre Quran and post Quran the Quran is a human document why why would Allah, the the almighty creator of the universe, utilize Arabic numerals, which is a human language? Uh, why would he utilize the finiteness of, you know, the perception of our form of mathematics when he's the one that transcends all of the all of the universe and doesn't like is it surah 112 somewhere over there but it's you know he's totally unlike creation why would he need to establish his all-powerful sovereignty and his existence and omniscience through the mere uh the mere amalgamation of numerical patterns that are no different to the other numerical patterns of other literature pre-quran it, it's it's like it's like if if Allah wants to show off that he can do this sort of thing I find it more I find it more um, uh, commendable and 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 awesome uh, by the way he's created this universe for example the Big Bang and everything associated with the Big Bang and or say evolution and how evolution worked out or you know I can think of so many bigger examples in nature for the omniscience and omnipotence of God than this so-called numerical pattern that, that happens to occur in a text and it's like wow you you really showed off there didn't you God like <laughs> it's anyway that that's that's my pushback on that yeah and uh you know it could have gone a variety of ways. The The fact that he went and answered the question about whether the Book of Mormon was inspired or not, uh, I think shows that he had no interest in actually thinking about the argument. I mean, he wouldn't even pick it a should have been the easiest question in the world. He just said, no, it's not inspired. And then I could have asked him to pick a chapter. Then he could have easily picked a chapter. And I couldn't have done it live. So it wasn't even that much of a threat. I mean, I can't find a pattern of 19 because Again, it's only one out of 19 chance. But if I try 19 different ways, I bet you I'm going to find a pattern of 19 in, in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, give or take. I mean, it, on average, once every 19 things I try, it's going to have a pattern of 19. Mm. You can so find my, some, again, this fits my, this is my thesis. Or you could just say that uh, that's Muhammad's yeah. age if you get stuck. <laughs> yeah, in, in the Bible you you can find like pattern for number seven, but in basically you cannot say that means something, you know, because uh, like you have seven, 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 but in in the language of the Bible number seven is uh, like uh, repeated very often, and that that doesn't mean that it have some I don't know uh, miraculous miraculous thing with number seven. Maybe it have, but I didn't saw that anybody from the church fathers or anybody from the holy men's even uh, holy men even said something about that. So he's like I don't know. Uh, you can probably yeah. from a book find some pattern for some number, whatever you like. Pick a number, and you will find like sixty-five letter, sixty-five uh, words, sixty-five sentences. It's it's like. Uh, I don't know a regular a regular pattern for for every book basically. Yeah, and as Tim yeah, so points out, numerical right, patterns but... betray its human origin. That's that's what's so ironic here. Can you guys hear me? And if, oh, if, look. Yeah, just one second, Mary. I want to say one thing real quick, and then I want to bring up that super, that uh, chat from um, uh, Ruth. So Tim's point here that he was just latching onto random stuff. They were totally unrelated to each other, right? Which means that the, the pattern probably isn't intentional. It's probably just 
you know, us trying to find it. But if every chapter had the same pattern, that would at least be something. That would at least be a real pattern. But at, to Rob's point that, you know, a human being could make that pattern. A, a, a human being, and did, right? The human beings put all kinds of patterns in the text of the Bible, for example. That, that there are some really extremely improbable mathematical patterns in the Bible. I don't cite it as evidence because it was intention of the author to put that in there. To, it was a mark of, you know, being really excellent or really skilled at writing poetry was to create this subtext, so to speak. And then uh, totally unrelated to anything, but Ruf says that her four-year-old niece is in intensive care. She's in the operating room less than an hour ago. Please pray for her. Absolutely. We'll do that. All right. Mary, I believe you want to read the passage about the 19 in the Quran. Well, I, I don't want to read it quite at this moment. I just want to point out I'm in the grocery yeah. store. I just want to point out that it is uh, awfully convenient that this pattern of 19 supposedly exists, but it is so intrinsic to the Quran that it took until the 20th century for anyone to figure out it was there. Oh. No one knew about this until then, and the person who discovered, made this great discovery, had to then hideously manipulate the text, leave out things, come up with excuses not to count things. Like he was going on and on, just losing his mind over Noah being mentioned 43 times. Noah isn't mentioned 43 times. He's mentioned 46 times. So even to make all of these things work, they have to manipulate and change the text around. But if this is supposed to be the proof of the Quran, why didn't anyone know it before, before the 1900s, like no one, oh, hundreds yeah, and hundreds, a thousand years pass, and no one has any idea that this, this is what that word 19 means. Uh, like that would be the worst proof ever if it took more than a thousand years to discover. It's just insane. Indeed. Indeed. Which... That, that's funny that the no one doesn't actually work. I, like I said, what I, I was granting that there was 43 and not actually checking it. But often they don't even work. They're they're based on complete frauds. Uh, they have manipulated the num the uh, the numbers that they put into their assumption, which is just sad because again, there's an infinite number of patterns you could find real 19s. If that's what you wanted to do. Well, you do stuff country. like you arbitrarily declare that I won't count the vocative form. So not yeah. counting the vocative yeah. forms, there's so many. They yeah. just like come up with reasons to exclude things. By the way, I, I'll need to head off, but uh, Thaddeus, uh, bless you. Yeah, I, I, I need to go soon as well. Um, Was there anything that Rob? you needed me to say on any particular point? or is that... No, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, tell you tell your friend that he's welcome back anytime. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. To have yeah. chats with him. That, that was no, the, Nam, Nam is awesome. Uh, I, I mean, I, I suppose I'm being a bit pre premature when I say this, but I, I genuinely think he's a brother in Christ. Like, yes, trust me, he's coming from a very, uh, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say fundamentalist because he's he is a thoughtful, very intelligent person, but. He, he, let's just say a very rigid uh conservative muslim uh and then and then i had a seven hour my first interaction with him was a seven hour interview with him on my channel like it, the, wow. the whole stream lasted seven hours and then yeah for the last say two three years he's he's been a faithful reader of everything i've written and not just that but the scholarship that i recommend you know certain scholars and their works and and he's uh he's just one of those he, that's what makes it so genuine because just as for example you and i well mostly you i think because you guys do a lot more work than i've done with respect to say islam and you know reading islamic literature and what islamic scholars say i've only just started you know finally dabbing into it but but so just like you, how you guys are faithful readers of Islamic literature, and then you uh, then confront Muslims and say, look, these are the issues we're finding when we read this literature. 
someone like Anam would find that quite commendable because you're actually going out of your way to read that stuff. No, there are a lot of people that that criticize, say, Islam that may not even know really the inner workings of Islam, and that that doesn't do justice or respect to in the you know in the you're not you're not being you're not being uh, you know the pursuit of truth. As, at, epistemologically, you're not being true to yourself when you do that. But but there are there are people that like for example yourself. That, you know you 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 demonstrate uh, fairness in that in that discussion. That's why I now affirm to you that is that yeah you you do know your stuff. And so to now come back with respect to Anam. So when Anam actually respects my time and effort uh by checking all the stuff out and in, in uh, you know checking out christianity and looking at at what say the early church communicated and the creeds and and how the creeds were developed and then the scholarship of the second temple stuff you know the big gamut of all that uh that is that is commendable like here here's a guy who's you know the pursuit of truth it's genuine it's it's and so i i i, I don't i'm not uh Okay, so I'm just saying, say if, he's, say if he remains a Muslim, but a very, very nuanced Muslim. Again, in my in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, he is imitating Christ way more than even a lot of, say, and I don't want to throw Christians under the bus, but even a lot of Christians don't seem to do that. They, because, you know, there are a lot of religious people, both Muslims and Christians and others, who, who may have, like, horse blinders on and and you know agendas and you know offshoot cultic teachings and though but those who have a critical eye with the, with you know in regards to the pursuit of truth and and critical thinking and going back to the drawing board and reassessing and and actually caring about what's true and you know because for example you're a mathematician like like you can't just run off with wild you know mathematical arguments that are not part of mainstream math it's it's the same sort of thing where if he's doing that it's it's like the scribe that came to jesus you know with respect to the shema and when jesus says you're not far from the kingdom of heaven it's like it's like it's like that moment that i'm having with an arm it's he's he's right there um and so as a friend i i and and in light of god's providence i just i just leave it up to God and Anam and our friendship and I I, I don't feel um, I don't feel like I, I I need to be pressured into you know like like asking him like hey Anam well when's it happening when when are you going to be coming <laughs> you know I don't feel like I need to go that direction because so far it's great just to see him self discover it because I know the method is genuine and Christ honoring as well so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, my wife wants to have dinner, so I will be wrapping up here very shortly. Uh, and Sir Pico, I'm yes. I know you were here a while. Did you want to say something? Uh, you know, um, I can go like maybe ten minutes. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that to you. I appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. Been following you guys for a little while. Uh, all of you, um, Avery, Rob, fan of yours too. Um, yeah, you know, I just wanted to, my thing is, uh, mass media, like its influence on, um, on everything, you know, and how long it's, how long it's been going on and just how deep, um, those wounds are worldwide and how unnoticed relatively it's been taking place. Um, and that, also includes its promotion of Islam. <laughs> I know uh, a lot of people say that, um, especially Muslims, that you know, mass media attacks them or portrays them in a negative light. But I would argue that um, even Hollywood movies that are about wars in the Middle East are actually doing the exact opposite, are portraying them as victims and. Uh, showing the uh, Western American forces as the enemy or the evil ones. So even in that example, uh, that's not true, and they're actually supporting Islam. But, uh, 
you know, since uh, yeah, uh, I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, uh, that definitely would be an interesting topic to discuss sometime. Um, my email is in the video description box. If you want to email me, we could set up a time and and uh, you know maybe make a stream on that topic Oof, specifically. Uh, I'd be honored. I, I'll, I'll prepare for that. So give me some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, they, I'm gonna head out. God bless. Take care. All righty. Uh, so, oh, have, is it possible for you to hear me whenever I don't have the, the screen up? Can you hear me right now? Sorry. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, awesome. Because I thought I couldn't read because I stuck on my phone. But it says it says uh, the, the actual chapter um, is about what's going to happen to somebody who criticizes uh, Muhammad. And it says that he is going to be uh, roasted in Sakar and uh, 7426. And what will teach? And then, and then it keeps going uh, beyond that. But there's an interruption right in the middle. Um, the very next verse is an interruption to the thought because people were asking him, what the heck is this Sakar thing? None of us know what it is. And so it says, then what can teach thee? What is Sakar? Uh, and then it goes about about all the things that the Sakar has. And then it says, you know, it spares not, neither leaves it alone, scorching the flat flesh or over at our 19. Nobody has any idea what this 19 means. So people continue to go, hey, Muhammad, we don't know what you're talking about here. And so there is this huge dump of him ranting furiously, an incredibly long uh, verse in the middle of this poetic section because he loses his temper. We have appointed only the angels to be the masters of the fire, and their number we have appointed is only a trial for the unbelievers, that those who are given the book may have certainty, and that those who believe may increase in belief. So, supposedly, the fact that there are 19, he said that there were 19, and these 19s are angels over the fire of Sakar, is supposed to make all believers and all the people of the book realize that he's legit. No one in the history of believers or the people of the book have ever had any idea where he got this idea of Sakar or of 19, which is hilarious because it's supposed to be a proof of Islam. So the very proof of Islam is something that absolutely no one can understand. So I always find it hilarious whenever they cite that because it's one of Muhammad's most embarrassing moments when he makes up a word because he can't remember the right word. And then he like furiously makes a wild claim that all the people of the book will know what he means by this. And you guys just don't because you're ignorant. But all the people of the book know. No, no, we don't. We have no idea. Only a lot. I know, I know from where he take that number 19. Do you? Because, because you will be the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, he was a prophet. So he know the future, you know. <laughs> and he saw that uh, Real Madrid will take uh, European championship and the uh, player with number 19 <laughs> will kill the score, you know? <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that makes literally because... as much sense as anything else. I swear, it yeah. really does. <laughs> yeah, so th that is that is the whole secret about 19 number. Real Madrid, people. <laughs> So uh, Anthony pointed out that chapter 19 of the Quran is about Jesus. So I guess we should all just read only chapter 19. <laughs> that's, the, that's the key to the text, right? So the, the key to the text is that it's really about Jesus, which actually, even though it's a joke, has a lot of credibility to it because the author of the text took a bunch of, of Christian material, took a bunch of Jewish material and yeah, changed it a little bit and claimed to be a prophet. So it ends up being a lot about Jesus. And he wasn't very bright, let's say, and he accidentally left a lot of the theology in place without actually understanding it. So once you read the Quran, if, if you try to read the Quran with Christian theology, you're going to notice a lot of things actually make up more sense. So uh, like I said, I need to close out here um, from... Mehmet, do a show on Islam and eschatology. That would be a great show, actually. I'd be very interested in doing that because, as is not well known, but should be well known, Muhammad predicted the end of the world within the next hundred years. So, didn't happen. Islam kind of forgot about the end times and 
But well, even, we, even didn't, we didn't even understand. That, we, right. we are infidels. Yeah, 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 you're right. It's just understand. one yeah. of those uh, hadith that is not perfectly clear. I it's Daif. It's Daif Bukhari. Um, Daif Bukhari. <laughs> Daif Bukhari, yes. Yeah. Um, but but even, even ignoring that fact, the tales about Islam's version of the Antichrist are quite humorous, and that would be a very interesting show to be sure. Then finally, uh, from Islam is Supreme, a.k.a. Nadir Ahmed. Yes, that's the miracle. Mathematical, inimitable, numerical, poetry, elegance, <laughs> science, completion of law, etc. Yet these buffoons still don't want to believe. Uh, yeah, none of those things are actually in the Quran. Those are only in your imaginary interpretation of it. And as we saw from ultimate truth, that as soon as you press on the issue and you try to get him to define the mathematical, all he can do is repeat himself because there's no actual basis for it. And it's just plain cherry picking. The inability of the Quran, completely arbitrary and meaningless criteria for judging whether something is from God or not. Technically speaking, literally every piece of writing is different and thus can't be duplicated. Uh, uh, numerical, what, what, the same as mathematical, what, poetry. What that's poetry, man? The same yeah. stuff uh, repeating again, again, again. Like I'm talking today is very beautiful day. Sun is shining, uh, flowers, you know, you, you can smell flowers. And the next moment I'm talking... And in Australia, it was one shark. And the United States, it's one bird. And again, you come back, oh, sun is shining, heaven is nice. Doesn't have sense, you know. If, if God made his word in poetry, he will not make it like messy stuff. It will be perfect poetry. And it's not. Even yeah, my people make, make epic poetry in, in my country because we had a big war with Turkey, like four, five, for about 40, 100, 40, 100 years, yeah, 400 years. So we have like uh, people's epic poetry, and it was written in, in, in the, we call it the Seterats, in, in the 10th ten, uh, ten part, like, you know, they have some, some stuff that go in 10, in 10 slogans, and it's, it, that, that stuff get more sense that Quran, for instance, because they don't repeat the same sentences, same words. They don't uh, jump from uh, one subject to another. It have more logic, and it was like right. uh, a little people made, you know. It was epic right, poetry yeah. about I mean, some. some let, let, let's yeah. say that the Quran's poetry is beautiful, which it certainly doesn't seem to be in translation. Uh, you know, I'm not an Arabic speaker, but let's just say it's for worse in Arabic. That it's beautiful, <laughs> that it's beautiful in Arabic. That wouldn't make it true. That would just mean that a, a talented poet wrote it. And so bad criteria there. Science, uh, yeah, very funny. Well, I, I don't we, know we about had, we you. We had a five-hour stream on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, but I don't think that excellent poetry requires manipulating and changing around words to have different sounds just to make things rhyme. And the rhymes no, are very, not. very basic. It's like the ends just rhyme. It's kind of like an unrhythmical Dr. Seuss in terms of the rhymes. It's not at all good. But the funny thing is, is that the Ginza Raba has the same rhyme pattern. It has the exact same thing with the same, un, without meter and the end rhymes. It possesses was, the same I was form. talking about that in, the, in the, some show, yeah. And, and a lot of names from Ginza Raba and, oh, what a mess. What a mess, man. Yeah, like Yaya comes from Ginza Raba. Yeah. What a mess. I think that's the perfect summary of <laughs> Islam. Uh, I didn't touch on completion of law, but I don't think that's even a claim that the Quran makes it for itself. Uh, there's no completion. It's just affirming the, the law that was brought in the Torah and the gospel. So I don't know what that's supposed to my, mean either. Unless he wants to say that Islam seeks to control every aspect of your life, in which case I would agree, but I would not make that a positive, let alone a proof of its divine origin. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you to God Logic for coming well, on. Thank, 
Thank you for everyone who joined uh, our numerous Muslim and pseudo Muslim commentators who brought arguments. Uh, even ultimate truth. I'll even thank him sure. for the first part, not the second part where he refused to answer any question, but the first part. Yeah, that, that was respectful dialogue. So thank you all for joining us today. Thank you again to everyone who gave a super chat. I'll be back on Sunday with Mary. We'll be discussing the, the Trinity. Uh, we will uh, be discuss well Mary will do a presentation on, on a brief presentation on how Christians can think about this and then we will be talking with a Muslim who has agreed to come on for that subject and we'll probably open it to callers if ultimate truth calls in I don't know if I'll listen to him but anyone else who calls in absolutely thank you again have a great week God bless <laughs>